Okie dokie, guys. Are we ready? When are, so. uh, let's just see. Is recording going? Recording is going. Uh, I need lights, though, so I'm not just a black man over here. Well, not that there's anything wrong with being a black man, but, like, I'm completely engulfed in shadows. <laughs> <laughs> Straight in the text file. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it going to be one of those days? Damn. I need lights, so I'm not just a black man yet. Oh, are you putting that in the quotes file? Yep. Damn it. Not that there's anything wrong with being a black man. Oh no, I'm leaving that bit out. I always make <laughs> quotes out of as bad as possible. I mean, it is completely up to you, black man, but... That was great. <laughs> oh god, just... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Okay, um, now how do I get that off? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! I had another one. <laughs> I just filled my coffee right up to the brim. Except for it's sitting on top of the grated top of my amplifier. I don't want to move it now. Lean down and just, like, use your lips to... <laughs> Except for, like, my giant computer tower is also in the way. Like, on the other oh, side of it. Um, you might yeah. just actually have to go and fetch a straw. <laughs> yeah, you need something. Retarded. So, if I brace <laughs> myself against this wall with my hand, and against the coat... I'm gonna hear electrocution sounds. Am I gonna hear electrocution sounds? <laughs> <sighs> this is a weird <laughs> angle to be drinking at. <laughs> I needed this this morning. Oh, oh my god. Oh, 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 like, my you. nose was in the cup. You By the way, I had to bend <laughs> over it. Absolutely. Oh. Mongoloid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Well, that's making it into the video. Do you want to do an intro for us, Droid? <laughs> yeah, let's do an intro. Uh, <laughs> well... So, uh, Hello everyone, we are down a couple of players because of illness and things, but um, as with the last Penny campaign, it's going to be a short little campaign. I want to expose you guys to a bit more of what Tabletop has available, rather than just fantasy adventure, because everyone thinks of D&D, &D, everyone thinks of things like monsters and dragons and, and warriors and heroes. Um, today we're going to be doing some D20 Modern. It's pretty much the same because it's based on the same control, the same rule set, which is D20. There's a few minor alterations that you need to know about. One of them is, of course, because it's based on sci-fi and modern stuff, it's going to be a lot more guns. So there's a few sort of gun rules. Uh, if you have a fully automatic rifle or a fully automatic weapon, you can just open fire with it. And then it becomes a matter of the opponents trying to dodge. So everyone you're shooting at gets a reflex save to avoid. Mm. The other thing is there's no money. Um, instead, you have a wealth modifier, and that's to do with basically it's a way of estimating how much money you can get hold of if you need to. Um, anything below your wealth modifier, you can buy without thinking about it. Anything above, you have to either roll a dice or take time to find and gather money together to get it and get loans and mortgages or whatever. Um, other than that, we're going to be playing a sci-fi campaign and a house brew rule because this is going to be slightly horror based campaign the house brew rule is everyone has half hit points yay half hit points everyone's going to die we like death um otherwise it's pretty much the same as last time the rules are basically the same as they were before but uh, i'll as always because your new players if you need any information or help i'll be giving it um so straight into the game um, okay, and I just did a um, 40 counter for both me and 50 for our holdout pistol with 40 rounds. Excellent. Fantastic. Um, so I'm just going to lock that to the table so it's not moving around on you. Excellent. Uh, uh, admin is doing admin tasks. Mm -hmm. This is wonderful. So we are in the moderately far-flung future. Um, the history of the universe as it goes is that uh, Earth had an issue with reducing resources and after much arguing between different countries and things, we finally managed to uh, begin mining the asteroid belt. Uh, 
because of costs of bringing materials down to Earth repeatedly for processing, they set up a processing facility on uh, the moon. Uh, this progressed into actually a residential city on the moon um, and a couple of satellites with uh, large residential populations of seven or 800. Okay. As the um, activity in the solar system increased, uh, human beings discovered something called magnetic trails, which are um, very strong magnetic currents, almost a bit like uh, riptides, that run around the universe. And they have found a way to use these to accelerate spaceships to exceedingly fast speeds. Oh, so, so um, basically there's like magnetic, basically currents, like space yep, currents, yeah. and they're just dropping their, their ships in the current and taking off with it. And day. using a large amount of um, coils to magnetize the outside of the ship to match up with the current so the current doesn't rip ah. to pieces. Okay. That's over neat. the last yep, over the last hundred years, uh, human beings have colonized four core planets, which are three planets in the Alpha Centauri system and one in the Hopalon system in Finari. And then there are four more planets in the Finari cluster that have been colonized and are considered outer planets, which means they are much less developed, they have much smaller populations, and they are much more um, on the way. Um, the planet that you're going to be starting on is the planet Ipton, which is a industrial-based planet, as you can see on the image on the screen. Uh, this is a uh, scene of the one large city in Ipton. Um, and ah, one the of those way... planets. Yep, it, it's, it's all about mining the planet there as fast as possible. Uh, the issue is with expansion came confusion over who was governing what, and what ended up happening is basically the corporations made a grab for power. And although most planets have their own planetary government, most of life is ruled over by the corporations. Um, the ones most powerful on Ipton at the moment are Salvage Tech, also known as Saltec, Observations of Life and Energy, known as Obslife, and Freedom Creations, which is a conglomerate that is attempting to break the hold of the corporations on Ipton. Okay. I have a strange feeling those guys are actually the bad guys. I don't know why. Just something my gut tells me that. <laughs> Down with the I've man! Seen too many movies. I've seen too many movies. All the movies. Um, so, what happens is each of your cats has their own background. We'll actually get on to discussing that in a minute. Um, but for one reason or another, um, yourself and four others have found themselves employed by Saltech, which is the salvage technologies company. And you have been employed in the very lucrative, but also perhaps slightly shady business of long range deep space rescue salvage and repair oh slightly shady so we're like hunting space wrecks and hoping not to find anybody on board hoping not to find anyone on board is a very apt point <laughs> so you have found yourselves on this vessel and um, this is going to turn out like the movie virus isn't it possibly yep. There may have been some may have been some inspiration going on in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am loving this. Okay. And you are riding the magnetic currents in the Finari cluster. Um about two or three days ago you received a message from Saltec about a moon mounted station on the surface of the second moon orbiting the third planet of the Amitra system on the edge of the Finari cluster, and how every transmission from that station has now gone dark. Hmm. Uh, you are to attend the moon and follow company, company policy in resource management, distribution, and collection. Company policy being, if there are people alive there and they put up a fight, ignore it and move on. If there's something you can grab, grab it. If there are people who need rescue, charge them for it. Nice. I like it. The station on the moon's surface is owned by Observe the Observance of Energy and Life Corporation. And Saltec remind you in the briefing that these are competitors in uh, business here in the Finari cluster. And any aid rendered should be done so following the requirements of interstellar law with in a minimal impact on Saltec industries. Hmm. So let's be dickbags and save them if you have to. 
Yeah, pretty much interstellar law basically says that you cannot intentionally cause um, the death of other people in deep space. Okay. So, um, you are going to be spending time on this ship together, so um, why don't you introduce your characters? Okay, so uh, how long have I been on the ship now? Is this like new employment? Or? Get, you've all been joined, you've all joined the ship sometime within the last week or so. Um, when it went on it, this particular voyage into uh, long range reconnaissance, rescue, and salvage. Okay, and have you given our characters names like last time? I have not given your characters names. You are free to name your character whatever you like. Damn it, now I gotta think of a name. Yeah, you just kind of threw that. Uh, <laughs> Jake Long. Jake Long's my porno name, so Jake... let's do it. Go for it, Jake Long. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I was expecting more like a rim shot. Or something with you out of mouth. Oh, <laughs> the, the worst thing is, like, if you say Jake Long is your porno name, Jake Long is also a cartoon character that I watched in a cartoon when I was a kid. Uh, that's like um, American yeah. Dragon? Yes. Yep. Oh my goodness, that's right. <laughs> and oh. disclosure, oh. people, I do not have a porno name. I was just Jake Long. <laughs> No, for it's, it's for really um nice. certain really reasons, bad. I was looking up dildos this morning for Fifty Foot Ant here. <laughs> so um, yes, that's the first thing that popped in my head. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so um, Jake Long, I am a longtime salvage operator. Uh, initially in low orbit salvage retrieval, so satellites that have broken <laughs> down orbiting planets and that, so um, high danger work. Uh, trying to better myself and get enough money to purchase my own ship and start my own small salvage business outside of large corporations. I am a strength-based character carrying along a magnetic coil ripper, so a heavy cutting tool as provided by the company. And otherwise, yeah, Penny Campaign, so I don't have that much of a backstory beyond that. Yep, that sounds fine by me. And Alrighty. 50 foot. Alrighty, I am a... Ex I am, sorry, wow, handicap, can't even read my own writing this morning. I'm a cleaner for the uh, local space mob crime syndicate. Trying to get out of the business after having uh, absolutely screwed up my last task. And I have an obsession with porcelain dolls for some unknown reason to everyone else. Uh, my name is going to be Basic. Where is it? How do I? Damn it. It's just going to be Saravok. S A R E V O K. Same as it is in everything. Why, why break something? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I am a. Strength, dexterity build, kind of a medic, sort of what dedicated hero field medic. So it's going to be a uh, going to be interesting for you. Yep, say that. Um, <laughs> otherwise, on the ship, um, you also have uh, Samuel. Uh, Samuel is an ex um, frontline fan. Uh, frontier explorer um he's not massively useful when it comes to salvage he doesn't understand a huge amount when it comes to how things are put together but his experience in frontline um uh, frontier planet exploration has given him a good sense of navigation he knows how to pilot basic ships he has knowledge of earth and life sciences geology um, he's got some basic repair skills because he had to repair his own stuff. He has a very small amount of injury treatment skill, like some first aid uh, knowledge. Um, but primarily, his main use is that he is experienced in rifles and in military arms, because most frontier explorers were. And he's currently uh, the only person on the ship who is carrying his own real weapon, um, apart from combat knives and things, his own real rifle. He's carrying a low-orbit defensive rifle from the MI company, um, which is the military industries. And the low-orbit defense rifle is designed for low-atmospheric pressure, rapid discharge. Hmm. Okay. As, uh, well, as Samuel, you have uh, Darren. Darren? Yes, all, yeah, Darren. Okay. All very basic names. Um, 
Darren is the ship's engineer. He was hired by Saltec at a reasonable amount of cost because he's exceedingly skilled in electronic and mechanical engineering, which when you get into deep space salvage, you kind of need to know how to turn off enemy ships. Oh, did I say enemy? I mean um, weakened or, or at-risk ships. Um, <laughs> was that a slip of things to come, or is that just... It, it's the ships we're opposing... Because <laughs> okay. that, that's that's a little bit of an intentional storyline storyline slip in that like deep yeah. space rescue and salvage tends to be rather cutthroat world, shall we say? Um, it, it's like, oh, we heard your ship's in danger and you're all about to die, so you got two options: either you can pay us to get you the hell out of there, or we can wait for you to die and then take your stuff. Pretty much, yeah. Um, okay. The engineer Darren is also carrying the. Uh, prototype from Saltec, which is the Project Icarus rifle. It is one of the first um, frontline issue rifles that uses um, an energy light discharge instead of a ballistic round. Um, oh, so however, it's got like the first prototype portable laser. Yep. However, it uses a two pound battery mm -hmm. to fire a single shot. Oh, that's actually pretty good energy density. Yep, that's that's full energy density. Like in our world, in in 2016, that's amazingly good energy density. That's energy density that we have no way of, in any way, comp, uh, yeah. achieving. Mm -hmm. um, for this world, this is actually also considered reasonably good energy density, considering it also has to be stable energy density. Mm -hmm. um, on the ship, you also have um, a couple of minor uh, mechanical assistants and two junkers. Okay. Um, so I'm not the only one on the ship that knows what I'm doing for salvage. Okay. Yep. Um, you have the two junkers who are Andrew and Maria. And then you have the two basic engineers who are Samantha and Richard. And the, these are basic generic people they are less skilled than yourselves and um samuel and darren uh they primarily work the ship and um have been employed for the same reason as you to go and make saltex some money to put this job in perspective um over the last five or six years most of the people working in low orbit salvage would have ex been expected to increase their their um sort of economic level by one or two points People who do a single Saltec run with a long-range rescue and salvage vessel and are successful can usually see a two or three-point jump in their their economic level um, almost immediately, um, simply because they are paid a huge amount for what they recover. Mm -hmm. Ships so, ain't cheap. Um, what'd you say? Ships ain't cheap. And then what was it like? Uh, at least in current naval stuff if you hand over a rescued vessel what is it like an average of 50 to 70 percent of the vehicle's worth is typical yep. reward for returning it yep yep so naval salvage um mm -hmm. it's it's very good wealth um so you in general are headed towards where Saltec has sent you to this moon-mounted station owned by Obzolife. Um, and as you approach into the system, oh, come on you, you see this. Oh, There is our planet and there is our moon. Okay. So, um, as the two player characters, you, you're going to kind of have a weigh in as to, to what you want to do. Um, your ship control is reasonably accurate. Um, you have someone with some basic piloting skills. So you've got this job to go and check out, check out this moon and the station on it. Mm -hmm. Any ideas of what you would like to do at this point? The station, so the station is on the moon. Yep. So terrestrial station, okay. Do -do -do. Hmm. Let's... Uh... Yeah, let's see if there's any immediate danger from 
the giant gaping fire crack on the planet erupting into our immediate <laughs> field of entry onto the moon. Okay, so um, let's see. What skills do you guys have? Uh, do a structural roll for me. So that's so going to be a d20? Plus 8. Yep. Oh, plus 8, not plus a d8? Okay. Yeah, plus eight. So we got a six. As, Woo! We got a six. Um, as far as you're aware, you don't know that much about planets. You are more of a structural engineer for um, buildings and, and ships and things that stay, and especially satellites, because they're what you used to dismantle. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, we do have someone who does have some frontier knowledge of planets. So let's roll for him. Thirteen plus. 10, he gets a 23. So, as far as the party is, is concerned, like the, the planet has obviously um, suffered a significant, uh, almost cataclysmic geological event. Um, basically, in all likelihood, because the crack is so large, any pressure within the planet has already been released. Um, and the planet is on what frontier explorers tend to call the cool. And the cool is where the interior core of a planet has been exposed, and the interior core is going to cool down probably over the next 50 to 100 years. Once the cool is finished, or near the end of when the cool is finished, because of the temperature change in the planet and the pressure changes, the planet is basically going to shatter itself into a, an asteroid belt as the gravity forces rip it apart. Oh, that'd be but, a very mineral-rich asteroid belt. So, 100 yeah, years would. time, mining area. Yep. Yeah. Um, but because the interior is still glowing, it's unlikely to break apart anytime soon. Okay, so not in a immediate danger of a yeah. eruption there. All right. So the people on uh, on station do they have do they know we're coming? Do they know anything about us? Uh, in some cases, with long distance salvage, they would. Um, but the okay. message you got from Saltech originally, the briefing said that the moon station had gone dark. This means that essentially one of several things has happened. Either everyone on the station has died from a catastrophic, catastrophic event, such as the station being hit by an asteroid yeah. and the systems being destroyed. Um, people could have been killed by a bacterial release. Um, yeah. It may just be that they ran out of power or they may have intentionally turned off their radios. Um, for Saltech Industries, as far as standard operating procedures go, if you go there and find everyone is alive and well, you tootle on your way and pretend you weren't there to raid the place okay. ragged. Um, okay. And but, the, the main ship we're on, yep. uh, is it atmospheric, or are we going to be taking a shuttle down? Uh, the moon is a zero-atmosphere environment. Okay. So you so will we can, be able to go down. We can operate yep. up within our ship. To get there, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm. Indeed, I'm, pretty, pretty to get there. I'm voting since we really don't know what's happened here, but we are in a fairly large vessel. Uh, like if we we're in a shuttle, I would have been like, let's do a couple flybys and scout stuff out. But like, we're we're in a large vessel. Our vis visibility isn't down. awesome. Mm. Let Let's hit their. Let's just hit their main. Um, Docking pad or landing pad or whatever sort of vehicle transport acceptance area they have. Nope. Whoops. Uh, come on, you. Because if crap goes wrong, like we got a big ship to yeah. just like <laughs> let's no, jump I'm, back I'm, on I'm, and GTFO. I was thinking the exact same thing. So um, you fly Ooh. down, approach approach the um, planet. And this is what you see mounted on the surface. It's been dug primarily into the um, edge of a crater, um, so the, the outer lip of a crater. So it's got a nice open expanse beside it. Um, there is a landing platform, which is off to the right-hand side down a um, access tube, access port. Um, and it's not a submer it's not a what they call a buried base. It's a surface base. The lights are on and the transmission tower looks intact, so you can't see any reason why they would have gone radio dark. Um, everything seems to look fine as you come in on your approach. Um, several of you are looking out windows and, and looking out um, different parts of your ship um, to, to get a look at it. Everything seems fine. 
and um, you land on the um, approach. Okay. So you've brought your ship into the landing of the approach. There's quite an obvious uh, universal connector port, um, which you bring your ship up to and you connect your uh, docking side port onto the connection port. Okay, so we do have um, a hard connection. We are open, walking exposed to it, okay? At the moment, okay. you do have a hard connection. Um, and you, I, I love the, the slight <laughs> snicker as people, as people realize things <laughs> <Yeah>. I've said. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Another <laughs> toad quote file. Do I have a hard connection? Yes, I do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, your ship is landed, and you and uh, Samuel, Darren, Andrew, Maria, Samantha, and Richard are all ready to prep yourselves for whatever you want to do next. So, um, are you going to try any kind of communication are you going to knock on the door so to speak um what what what, what would you like to try and do i'd say i'd like to hail them see if there is anybody actually alive in there if they are kind of sol or just no power at all or at least no communications at all okay so um uh uh, a resident mobster um, is on the bridge of your ship, and he, after landing, um, fires up the communication system and sends out the standardized interstellar pulses, um, which are requests for communication, and gets no response. No response. Okay. However, Didn't when so. sweeping the radio frequencies in the local area, uh, you do find a shortwave uh, radio frequency that is having a uh, transmission active and you feed into that short range radio transmission and you get essentially periodic bursts of static um, which come in a rhythmic pattern. Someone's left the mic dangling again and it's bumping against the counter. Great. Very possibly. Very possibly. Uh, since we've got a hard connection to this base, uh, let's, uh, let's see if we can um, interface with their their computer at all, see if there's any sort of damage reported or if we can determine any status from our direct link to their equipment. Okay, so make a computer use check if you're going to do it yourself or you can ask someone else to. I'm a salvage guy. I like to look into computers and take stuff apart. So I got a four. Wow, that that's... So to Toad's, ab Toad's ability at, at rolling dice remains exactly oh. the same. Damn it. But it was last time. Uh, but I do get a plus something for my jack of all trades, right? So where are um, my feats, jack of all trades? Use any skill untrained. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, uh, you get plus one for your intelligence because you're using computers. Okay. So you get a uh, Do I get an extra for the search or repair stuff or no? Uh, no, because you're just trying to interface with their computer okay. at the moment. Um, so you kind of stab random buttons on the, the console and in the end um, uh, Samuel uh, sorry Samantha, uh, in the end Samantha who's one of the onboard engineers uh, takes pity on you and uh, <laughs> boots, up the, boot, boots up the interface system um, you get a nice little jingle and um, the Obsolife uh, logo pops up, yes even in the future there are still logo screens <laughs> ba -da -da -da. <laughs> essentially logo. yes Obsolife Obs um, and you get the base interaction interface for the station, which is a welcome screen from Obsolife and a, some basic information about visiting the station, which basically says that this station is a closed Obsolife facility and um, use of the station for refueling and emergencies is permitted under interstellar law um, because, of course, allowing someone to die for inaction is considered a crime in interstellar space. Um, however, uh, visiting is not welcome. It is not a pleasure station. It is not a uh, R&R station. It is a closed research station working for the Obsolife nice. organization. Okay. 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 So nothing as of... Can we just uh, cycle the... do a dry cycle of the airlock? Make sure all their connections are good and we've got atmosphere on the other side? 
Okay, that's fine. Um, you run a dry cycle of the airlock and you use your own onboard uh, monitoring equipment to mon monitor and manage the dry cycle of the airlock. What you discover is that the pressure on the other side of the airlock is a tad low. Um, we're talking 0.8 atmospheres instead of a full atmosphere of pressure, which is an abnormal thing to have. Suggests there might be some unchecked atmospheric leak somewhere on the station that is um, impacting. It could also mean that uh, the lock isn't securing properly um, or that there is some kind of uh, atmospheric cycler problem with the uh, atmospheric generator on the station. Okay, so it is something that is abnormal. It's not within tolerance. It is indeed something that's abnormal. Okay. I suggest suiting up then and being on our way. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's generally agreed that recovery suits are probably the best thing to do. The recovery suit provided by Saltech is a basic short trip um, uh, space Evo suit. Uh, it has its own internal radio. It has an emergency beacon. It also has a couple of impact plates on the high-risk areas of the suit, such as the outside of the shoulders, the rib cage, the front of the chest, the spine, and the the, the uh, hips and thighs. And it also has armored boots uh, because, of course, it's used for recovery and salvage missions. Um, and it works perfectly well in a basic um, vacuum environment. So you all spend together, all eight of you spend probably about 15, 16 minutes suiting up, um, pulling on different bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. They're reasonably easy to pull on suits. Well, you're saying 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty quick spacesuit. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, the the way they're designed is essentially it is a kind of step in wrap around deal. Uh, okay. They are mounted, they are wall mounted, and they are held open. You step backwards into them, place your hands in the arms, and then pull the suit closed around the front of you and seal it. Mm. Um, and then you slide your feet into boots, seal them, and pull your helmet on. It's a reasonably quick and efficient system. Um, it's a do-it-yourself Iron Man suit. I like it. Yep. Um, and basically, it was designed that way because it was found that the old style of um, suits, when you were doing six or seven week missions, became almost unbearable to wear. But because they took almost four or five hours to put on, if mm -hmm. there was a leak on the ship's surface or something like that, if there was an atmospheric issue, that was too long. Mm -hmm. Uh, the suits also have with them a basic backpack, um, which contains basic med kit, um, some simple cutting equipment. Uh, the suit has a hip holster on which your Saltec issue holdout pistol is uh, holstered. So as a group, you are all suited up and ready. Okay, suited um, up, ready, and the airlock's been cycled. We are good to go there. What else yep. should we do and check? Ah, uh, okay, so we are near future after privatized space travel. Yep. Do, uh, do we have any sort of, say, like a um, scanning or life signs detector or anything like that, or are we purely observation because that's too far flung future? Uh, you do have a few pieces of equipment that is used for um, emergency salvage and rescue. Uh, they are quite large pieces of equipment, and they are not necessarily what a lot of people would think of when you think of scanners. You have a sonic scan, which is essentially a um, thing roughly about the size of a suitcase that you can press the metal surfaces, and it will pick up sonic. Um, and so basically pick up like a waves. vibration detector through the hull, okay. Yep, you have a vibration detector through solid objects. Um, you also have some hypersensitivity devices. A hypersensitivity device roughly the size of a thermos, um, a large thermos flask. And basically, it detects uh, particles in the air. It detects sound uh, below human hearing levels. And it detects light below human sight levels. And it just gives you an indicator as if it's picking something odd up. Um, it's essentially a very small compressed microphone and microchip um, set up with a uh, very small uh, set of chemical detection plates inside it. Okay, so our vibro sensor, is it a standalone device or is it tied into our suit displays? Is it tethered? Is it wireless? It is tied into itself. It is a standalone device, but okay. it does have a, a necessity to be set up and um, worked as a single functioning unit. It can't be uh, broken down. So I can't throw it into a room and just remotely monitor it. I have to set it against something and read the display on the unit. 
Exactly. Okay. I'll take the thermos of uh, chemical detection. detection. <laughs> 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 I, I shall take the plus two thermos of chemical it. detection and place it in my large bag of holdings. <laughs> and if you want to take the... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take the vibro sensor. Down. Okay. okay. Suitcase of sound. <laughs> this is great. We, we got like the two yeah. newbiest tabletop players. Oh, Naming oh, everything in their own way. Oh, uh, this futuristic. I'm more medieval, so I mean, yeah. it's perfect. Okay. All right, and uh, then, um, yeah, with that vibro sensor, I'm gonna walk in. Our once we come through the airlock, how? What are we seeing? So we're entering the airlock. Is it a straight hallway ahead of us? Is there a? Or I'll just let you describe it. Sorry, instead of. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Um. You go into the airlock, which is the, the standard pod airlock, um, having come out of your ship's own um, airlock management uh, okay. area, which has your suits and your, your equipment. Um, as you come out, it looks like, well, to be perfectly honest, it's a pretty standard um, airlock uh, for a station. It is a airlock that opens into an expansion corridor, mm -hmm. um, which is a... Um, Arrival lounge, as far as you can tell, it has glass windows on the left hand side or, or plexi windows on the left hand side that let you look out onto the ship that's docked there. Um, there are a couple of um, what appear to be CCTV monitors uh, mounted on the ceiling, and there is a lovely little um, message that plays on repeat. Um, it's a, a soft little jingle um, followed by a message from Odds Life, um, basically reminding you that this is a um, research facility um it's it's a soft female voice going greetings and welcome to the obs life research facility here on mitra moon zero one please remember that this is a research facility owned by obs life and an operating industrial facility this is not a pleasure or um re uh, resuscitation or rescue device uh, rescue center um, please remember that while we will follow all the tenets of interstellar law that uh, unwelcome visitors will be asked to leave, and if they are not willing to leave, will be forced to leave. Please remember that any damage done to the station will be chargeable to your uh, home company, and Obs Life will make sure that all debts are paid in full. Okay. And it's quiet. Apart from that, and the the sort of slight. Um, yeah, the sounds the, of the station, the background thrumming of artificial air support and all that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's completely dead. There's you'd expect with a, a ship landing at a station that someone would be coming out to meet you, but okay. nope, nothing. Okay. Clean, and pleasant, and so lovely. we've just so we walk through the airlock. Airlock's opened, and we're greeted by a hallway that travels in both directions. Then. Uh, it carries on ahead of you for probably about... Um, oh, so we've walked into, like, we are the end of a straight hallway. Yep. Uh, okay. It carries on ahead of you for probably about 100 feet, um, and that is the, the docking ports uh, strip. Mm -hmm. And then the turning to the right that you see there leads up onto the connection bridge, which connects with the main station. Okay. And has there been any um, cargo left in this nice hallway that we're going along, or is it a clean, debris-free area? It's as we see it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the, the connection, the connection link with um, your ship, and okay. this is this is um, where you've come out into this this hallway. So the hallway you okay. saw was uh, probably seen from just to the right of the doors. Uh, that turn to the right is directly ahead of you. Um, leading into the main part of the bay. Um, so there we is, are currently um, here then? Yeah, you are currently just beyond the doors of the airlock. Okay. Um, Get us down to scale of the grid. Beauty. Okay. So on the left, there's... Um, a couple of chairs out uh, by the open window, or by open windows, by the by the windows. Yeah, observation. Um, by the observation windows, there's uh, a large crate on the left hand side, and a couple of crates on the right hand side. Um, that just seem to be standard operating crates. Um, you've already passed past the suit 
uh, mounts which were mm-hmm. in the uh, ship uh, in the uh, station side of the docking bay, um, which are these four little, mm-hmm. do- yeah, which are your four suit bays for the station, um, and then you've got the seats and the cargo bays. Uh, you've then got the door to the right, which leads off into the main sort of entry section of the station, and those two little stairwells lead into the corridor. Okay. Uh, so being in the profession that we are, so you said the crates were off to the left or the right? Uh, you've got one crate off to the left, and then you've got a couple of crates off to the right at the end of the corridors. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I'll check the right, just to um, determine the contents of the crate, see if it should be marked for salvage as we're leaving. Yep. I want to find out what's in mind, see if there's anything I can take before I mark it for salvage. That will be useful. Hello, Droid, you still with us? Sorry, uh, just had someone uh, send me a message about something that had broken and they needed to know how to fix it. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> No, I just heard some nice uh, anomalies on Discord, so I wasn't sure whether you got disconnected on us or not. Okay, so we are searching so, the crates, seeing if they are useful for salvage or not. The the crate on the left-hand side, the uh, one that... Um, 50 foot, the one that... Um, what's his name? Saravok. Uh, Saverick. Sarek, um has gone to have a look at is um, a pretty standard crate that you'd find in this sort of environment, which is that it has an awful lot of spare spacesuits, um, bits for spacesuit repair. Um, it's got a few general EVA tools in it. It's obviously um, been left there because they couldn't be bothered to take it into a storage de- department. On the right hand side, you have crates of chemicals, basically. Um, you have crates of different acids and alkalized bases. Um, you've got a few uh, heavy metals and things um, in solute. Um, s- standard research chemicals, all labeled up nice and neat and mm-hmm. packed in a metal retainer uh, ring so that they don't damage the glass vases or glass vi- vials as they get transported. Okay. Uh- and the doors in front of us, are they solid doors, or do they have pass-through windows, or what are they? Uh, they're pretty standard station doors, which means they act an awful lot like fire doors. Um, they are mostly solid, but they have a section you can look for. Look okay. Through. All right, so how big are the uh, suit repair kits that I found in this right here? Well, it's it's sets of pieces and, and bits and pieces. Um, you... Okay, okay, it's big. Okay. Yeah, you you can um, grab a um, standard emergency pack, which is a small pack. You should probably have them on your own ship. Um, It contains uh, aluminized tape, which um, is used to seal small holes in suits. And um, it also contains a couple of tubes of rapid gel, um, which is used to coat um, your mask or coat the connectors between your oxygen system if they become damaged and it hardens upon exposure to uh, any kind of atmosphere. So it hardens on any cracks or holes that you have in your suit. Okay. Uh, nice. well, I'm definitely grabbing that. Okay. And then I'll wander over and let uh, let Foreign Star in on what's in the, uh, what's in the crate there. See if he wants to grab anything or mark that for salvage because it seems generally useless aside from the emergency kit. Yeah, it's something that if we're leaving the station, we don't find anything else. It's something we'll take with us just because, hey, we can resell that as a scrap crew. But yeah, and are you gonna are you gonna let me know what's in it in your crate, or are you just gonna be a selfish little homo? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I figured, like, we'd have, like, a checkbox. Like, we're just walking through. It's like, is this something we take? Not immediately. Yeah, yeah. Let's continue on. I'm taking, love- I'm taking stuff immediately because I'm, I'm not... I'm, I'm a shady person working for a shady corporation. Yeah. I don't, I don't do things up front. <laughs> I must admit, I do love the fact that you guys are here. You don't even know if there's anyone alive on the station or if, you know, they're going to get pissed with you. You've already started raiding and, like, taking shit. It's like, well, okay. Well, he's raiding stuff. I'm just looking through. It's like, okay, like, we're passing through this hallway. Let's take a quick look at the content. Is this something oh, I yeah. bother you, writing you, down you, or not? You've got a fucking clipboard out going, that's worth money and that's worth money. 
<laughs> Pretty much. I think a couple of things have asked when uh when Jake Long's not looking. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming these are like large storage containers. Like this is like industrial supplies, dude. It's not like oh, I've got a small know. vial of acid. I'm thinking like a gallon or something. Or are they like drums? Uh, they are like we're talking um, a uh, imperial five or six gallon container. Um, oh, okay, I thought it was like a single gallon. No, it, it's like five gallon <laughs> pail, no, dude. Like... In... No, I will eat that. I'm going to walk not... around with my five gallon pails of acid just in case I have to dissolve no, a body in acid. here being the cleaner. I'm going to walk with 40, <laughs> with 40 liters or 40 pounds of acid, you know, just, uh... <laughs> just oh. in case. I mean, hey, it could come in handy, let's be honest now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will uh, walk up to the door and cautiously yeah, peer uh, through I'll, the I, I pass through window. I want to make, sure un- make sure I'm unseen. Okay, but so... I'm roll for that. Eleven. Plus eight. You're just stealthing at the side of the door. Yep, he's yeah. just tucked himself away at the side of the door. Um... The other guys, um, as is typical in these sorts of situations, are in a lot less interest of being particularly stealthy. They're yeah. just wandering around in here, looking at crates, looking out of the ship, just just having a little bit of a nose around. You uh, know, they're doing the exact same thing I was doing. Like, we're a salvage crew. You take a quick look at this yep, stuff and pass on. Stuff. That's one of their jobs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we got Sarabok hey, here. I'm He's like, oh, let, let's grab that. Yoink. Uh, <laughs> so, Toad, um, as you are looking through that particular window, can you give me a... Um, a perception check? Uh, a spot check, yeah. And then my spot ability is a plus one. <laughs> what did I roll? Six. Seven! Woo! I gotta... L- literally, you have yet to roll above a ten in any game I have played. With you. Oh, this is... Oh my god, that's true. Yeah, he's rolled below 10. He's rolled below 50% on every single roll. <laughs> so, How you look through the window. Possible? Uh, I'm you special window, that way. You see um, another set of doors to the left-hand side. To the right, you see some um, machinery bays, um, some crates, some basic things that you'd expect um, coming off a ship. So, you've got some uh, cargo loader. Uh, so, basically, we've got the cargo load area. Okay. Yeah, uh, right. you've got a couple um, of the, the big load of trolleys to pull cargo crates with. Um, you've got some cargo crates. You've got um, what appears to be a semi-disassembled uh, hydroponics kit um, in the corner. Okay. And then the other set of doors to me. Uh, I'm yeah. going to just yell out to everybody well, else, let them know my findings. No, just, and... no, since we don't know why the ship went dark, let me go ahead and take a look in case it was attacked by... by... Some unknown roll, roll force. Spot. Of roll a spot. Roll a spot. If you want a spot, you spot, uh, man. Do it. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's not rolling. There you go. Yay, you got a 13. Okay. So what's your what's your spot? Um your spot uh, is um, nine. Nine. So you Holy managed crap. to uh, nice. claw, claw together a twenty-two. Uh you peek through the same window as Mr. Toad. Um, you are not Mr. Badger, however. Uh, you peek through the same window as Mr. Toad, and you spot something that Toad hasn't spotted, hmm. which is mm-hmm. that there is fine red spray um, across two of the crates that you can see through the window, um, which are this crate here and this crate here, these two crates that make a hmm. corridor together. Uh, there is fine red okay. spray on them, and there is a space boot or at least you can see the boot of a space suit, so to speak, mm. around about there, just in your vision. Yeah, one second. I hear some ridiculous barking outside right now. Woof, 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 woof. Yeah, I'm scared. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so I continue with my plan, yelling out at everybody, hey, we got a cargo hold over no, here. No, I'm going to let you know. Stop. Don't do that. There's... Why not? We There's... have a crew over here that we yeah, are announcing yeah. to our crew in this closed corridor behind sealed walls, which contain atmosphere in that. 
Okay. We don't know if we have if they have any monitoring, if any transmission stuff is on that we don't know about. Dude, we aren't like sneaking. Cameras, we are a like, salvage crew. There's okay, we're here to rescue people. Which shows that people were damp. If there's blood spread like that, and there's no bodies, that means bodies were moved. Well, I'm thinking more. Well, screw you! I'm my own guy, and I'm gonna yell out at can these I, people. Like, can I also point something out, guys? Can I also point something out? Um, you are all in uh, recovery suits, which like, have it, it's a radio, radio you jackhole. Oh yeah, hold on. So, like, you can, you can you radio between each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Took me a. Uh, let's uh, just call me call me retarded. Let's do that. Uh, I don't know what color that would be. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> not, not only does it change color, but it also gets huge. <laughs> oh god damn it! <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, uh, all right. I am a giant builder team. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, so I have announced to the rest of our crew through our internal radios. You jackhole. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. <laughs> and how's our crew contributed anything to this? Like, have they checked uh, the other door as we're peering through this one? Or are they just kind of, uh, like, cataloging crap in the room? They they have indeed. Um, a couple of them have been going around doing the standard checks. Uh, the uh, whole thing seems structurally sound. The uh, computer system's working fine. They've had a look through the other doors. Um, the door directly ahead of you seems to be the standard path for cargo containers to be traveled through. So it's got a heavy industrial floor and it's got double doors accessing the, the next section. Um, on the far left, there is a door, but it is blocked by um, large steel crates. Um, so obviously they, they've kind of packed that side slightly more tightly. Um, but as far as you can tell, that's, that's all you can see at the moment. Okay, and they've shared this information around. Nice, yep. okay. So, since now that we've let our crew know and we've all shared information, because that is the smart thing to do as a salvage crew, be fully informed instead of hiding <laughs> like a ninja in a corner. Uh, yeah, since... I'm telling you guys everything. I'm just not yeah. Since Saravox <laughs> found blood, I am going to go over to um, this other door and try to open it. Is it opening okay, freely? So it opens fine. It's just got a massive great crate in front of it. Okay, I'm going to place the vibro sensor on the crate to see if I can detect any movement through the hard floor which the crate is sitting on, because then we can sense if All there's right. any direct heavy vibrations in the room. Okay, okay. While he's doing that, I'm going to sneak through here, and uh, this is a window here as well, or? Uh, yeah, that's got windows on it as well. Oh, was uh, I supposed yeah, to roll gonna... for something? Sorry. Oh no, I'm I'm rolling against my my own table that I've got. I've got a percentile okay. table of thing, things that might happen. Um. <laughs> right. Nice. I'm, I'm actually over here. I'm gonna look through this window. I want to see what I can see down in this area. Roll a spot for me. Okay, so you place the vibro right. sensor against the crate and you press uh, the activation, and you you hear the the standard. Um, sort of high-pitched squeak or high-pitched whistle as it starts up and starts sending um, ultrasonic vibrations through the structure. Mm -hmm. um, the way the system is set up is basically it has three displays. You have a um, thing that is a bit like a sonar display, which mm -hmm. um, the uh, machine is very in very insistent to remind you is a random rough estimation and mm -hmm. the position of things may not be accurate um, depending on the material that the vibrations are passing through. You also have a vibration tracker which is a bit like a sound wave reader mm -hmm. and you have a rhythm tracker which is simply a um, sort of con constantly moving line that keeps track of any spikes of vibration on it. Mm -hmm. um, and records them in a line that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you watch it. Yeah. Um, what you get is you get a low-level hum, which would be the, the standard hum of the station. Um, you get um, what appears to be, uh, again, you have the, the rhythmic, the same rhythm that you got from the radio. Okay. You have this rhythmic um, vibration pulse that's traveling through the local area. And also, you have um, this almost semi-random spike of exceedingly high-frequency sound um, that's just 
popping up just randomly every now and then, just this tiny little of sound that the vibration sensor is uh, picking up. Okay, so... Interpret as you will. Does it give me any... So you're saying it's a sound vibration instead of like an impact vibration. Does it give me any um, estimates of size or volume of like the, the volume of which would be happening or is it just a it should be a high volume or is it a high frequency because of the the uh, uh, readout I'm displaying if you, if you look at the uh, very uh, the little display that reminds you how inaccurate mm -hmm. it is um, you're assuming that uh, most of it because it is a, a standard color across the display most of the noise is uh, all consuming it covers the 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 multiple directions it's coming in from. Okay, so um, the, so it's not like it's hearing something like roll off a table and hit like marbles rolling off a table or like a nope, blood drip uh, randomly. It's, it's just itself, like there's a planet itself. However, there's the, an the all encompassing sound in there. The high pitched tick sound, the high pitch the the sound that is beyond human hearing, mm -hmm. little tch, tch, tch sound. It is picking that up to be roughly over there. Okay. And by the estimate, it is probably human sized. Okay, so that's that's what I was looking for. Is, yeah, like the the size of the sound producing thing or the mass of sound producing thing. Okay. Hmm. All right, and I rolled a five. What do I get to see through this window? You get to see wall and lights and floor, and there's a staircase just to the right and, and crates. Okay, what stuff. Kind of, what kind of lights? Are they hanging fluorescent or like industrial? Like uh, just like the lights that are in the land bay, they are semi embedded okay. in the wall at the top, um, and they are okay. angled out to to light the environment. Again, it it, it okay. all seems okay. quite nice and well lit. The, the whole place is lit. Well, alrighty. Let's uh, I'm gonna move over here and wait for the crew. Okay, so. Yeah. Ooh, why that one note card go back in the box? I want to take hold of the crew. So. Everyone's ready. Everyone's had a look mm -hmm. around. You've all shared information. Everyone's a little bit freaked out because of blood and splatter. Um, a couple of the guys, especially the frontier guy, um, Darren, no, sorry, uh, Samuel, the frontier mm -hmm. guy, um, he says that it, it's not uncommon for people to go a little bit crazy and there to be a fight. Yeah. Um, so it's possible that um, after however long this station has been operating, the crew went a little bit crazy and has had a fight, and this person is just gotten off worse on the fight. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm really surprised Sarah Vox doing, like, this whole stealthy cleaner thing. It's like, we, we're we on a what? ship which we are supposed to be salvaging. It, it went There's a little dark, bit of blood so we, somewhere. We also don't know who else has been here, though. Why it went dark. We have no answers for anything. Okay, but we are it also, I, I'm, be... I'm assuming anyway, we're in a universe of human population. There is no known alien species. And we, a, we're uh, we're in a so we're in a station that went dark, so there's more likely a mechanical failure that we're assuming than anything else. The, 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 I'm more worried about people being the aggressors than anything else. Okay. People are unpredictable. You can't you can't expect shit. You also have to remember that, of course, this is um, a lot of your guys' first time in long range salvage. Oh um, right, yeah. So, so some of you guys like uh, this is the odd thing about long range. Some of these guys rest. have only been on the job for a week, whereas I'm used to disassembling crap and being in high risk environments. Okay, yes. So, um, I uh, Savrox moved through the door um, mm -hmm. out into the environment, and uh, the rest of the crew are going to come and scatter themselves yeah. about. They're going to come and have a look. Um, there is indeed blood on this crate, and one of your um, salvage guys is just kind of fascinated by that blood. Um, and you find, uh, around the corner there, uh, you find that the space boot is indeed attached to a space leg, which is indeed attached to a space hip, which is indeed attached to a space torso, which, surprisingly, does indeed have a space head. Um, <laughs> okay, so fully intact. Space oh, everything. Are arms, though? Or there are indeed though. space arms. <laughs> okay, you, you left that out. I was like, oh, so we got, we got an armist body. Cool. So the, the, the person is wearing a um, uh, quite 
brightly colored uh, spacesuit. It's it's white with uh, an orange stripe. Um, it's it's a pretty basic spacesuit. It doesn't have the armored patches that recovery suits have, um, and it has a small oxygen tank. Uh, the faceplate of his spacesuit has been impacted inwards, and his face is covered in um, scratches and and. Is, is, is a bit of a bloody mess, to be fair, which is you're guessing where the blood splatters come from. Um, there's a pool of blood in the back of his space helmet because he's lying face up. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so what you can... Sorry, I lost you for a moment. Yeah, what, lost what we completely. can, what? <laughs> Hello? If you could have a little bit of a... <laughs> um, didn't hear any of that. Yeah, we just got a compressed audio splurge. Yeah, wow. Uh, we're getting there, but you're very musical to us. Yay! Technical difficulties! Yeah. Yeah, you're cutting out pretty bad too. Oh, am I? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna disconnect and reconnect. Okay, attempting to reconnect to Discord. Yay! Okay, are we all here? Oh, no, we are not. Disconnected, okay. Connecting. We could solve this with a Steam call. Do, 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 do. And here. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're back. Yeah, it Fantastic. seems like Discord had a bit of a fart. Okay, the other thing yeah. I just noticed is that this voice group was at like 64 kilobits per second instead of the 20 we need for voice. So, uh, yeah, that was probably part of it, is that this is the only voice chat I hadn't set up properly to be a low-leg voice. It was like okay, okay, so stupid okay. high quality. Um, yeah. Where 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 did you where did you lose me? Okay, we lost you at um you just described the blood pooling in the back of the guy's helmet. Okay. So Savrick is an ex body disposal specialist uh, for the uh Mathis, so he might be able to use the experience with injuries to learn some more. Um in the meantime, the other guys are um spread and having a look around. Um that's not really surprising. One of the the youngest comes over to um, basically stand over the body with Tarek. Um Yeah, we're getting very musical again. Do you guys yeah, want to try a Steam robot. call? Yeah, let's try a Steam call. Uh, yep. Hello? And there we go, so we got Droid. Is this less musical? Yes, very much so. And then we got invite to chat. Where is a huh? Do I not have fifty on Steam? You all friend? I know I've got him on Steam. Is he in like an off lot? There we go. Sergeant Fifty Foot Ant has just started playing. Okay, so we want to invite to chat Surgeon Fifty Foot Ant. Okay.
Can we all hear each other? Hello? No other, nobody else is voice chatting. Yo. Oh, there we go. We got 50 back. Yep. Remember not to close your voice chat this time like you typically do. Yeah, I know. I mean, I need to minimize. I just shift tabbed. Nice. Good. Oh, there we go. There we go. Ah, there we go. There yeah. we go. Yay, Steam we Call. So, is this a little bit less musical yeah. for us? Yeah, so I made yeah. out that, yeah, 50 because of his expertise in dis disposing of bodies is able to determine stuff, and then we've got a uh, typical engineer dude. Or this is one of the space uh, junkers. Junker. He's one of the junkers. junkers. Okay. Uh, we've got an engineer um, up here who's uh, looking at um, the crates, and then the other group are headed off towards the other crates to go and have a look at them, okay. uh, as standard like salvage tech guys would do. And so, I'm going to um, investigate the body. I want to find out what more would happen. Okie dokie. Okay. Uh, our comms, are they currently closed, or are they an open so we can all hear each other? Uh, because it is just a um, sort of standard radio com, then you've got four channels to pick from. You've all got one channel which is being left open. Um, but because, of course, it's a standard radio com, it has a limited range, especially through okay. heavy metal circuits. But w within this room, we are all currently hearing each other in whatever we describe. So, like, a anything yes. we hear, can we can assume as being shared over the radio instead of having to compartmentalize uh, yep. our knowledge. Yeah, unless okay. one of you wants to keep something secret. Okay. So, 50's got a very high level of uh, injury experience. Um, so, he rolled a 9, and um, with his... 8. Uh, 8. With his injury experience, he managed to get uh, 22. Um, so, basically, um, what he sees is that um, this was done by sheer brute force. Um, th this was a case of someone has grabbed hold of this guy and battered him against the metal crates. Um, in all likelihood, the injuries to his face haven't actually killed him. Um, in all likelihood, it was probably uh, blunt force trauma as his head rattled around inside his space helmet um, yeah. that has okay. been the death of this particular individual. So a very strong person did this, or multiple people. Yep, in all likelihood, I mean, it, it's smashed a space spacesuit visor. Even a poorly constructed one would require a lot of force. Mm -hmm. uh, that would also probably explain the blood splatter on the crates. Someone probably was banging this guy against the crates um, to kill him. There's no sign of gunshot wounds or um, any kind of um, tool being used to smash the guy's face in. It just seems like this guy was being bounced around inside his spacesuit. Okay. Uh, is hey. with the construction of the spacesuit, would there be any way for that to be self-inflicted just by smashing his head against something, or would it have to have been force applied ex externally? He could. He could have um, banged his head against things. He could have um, essentially um, smashed his face into the corner okay. of the crate repeatedly until until his spacesuit. So broke. he could have been. Oh crap! There's um, a bee in here. And trying to kill the bee yes, with his face. He, he okay. could have been scared of the dangerous space bee. Um, <laughs> just saying, like, a, I, like it, he, the guy's got scratches on his face. Was he trying to let something out? Is my consideration there. Certainly a possibility. Uh, anyway, I'm going to continue doing my salvage run, checking through the crates. I ran a spot check of 16 to see if there's anything oh else I God. perceive oh, while I'm, I'm while I'm walking really around cool. here. Yes. I so, will I'll again, do the same thing. I get shorter. It's, it's a decent enough um, uh, check. Um, you you can notice that most of the crates are standard materials. You've got some mechanical equipment. You've got some computer devices. You've got um, a lot of the stuff that a station would need to run. Um, to keep itself operational. Um, repairs and spares, um, you've got some large metal sheeting. Um, there seems to be quite a lot of it, um, mm. more than you'd expect for repairs and spares. Um, so possibly this station has recently stocked up. Um, 
and in the corner you have the hydroponics kit which is a partially assembled hydroponics array um pretty standard um at the moment um space weed yes <laughs> space weed um at the moment we have um samuel and darren uh, who've moved on to uh, the stairwell leading up to the connection uh, corridor okay and one of the engineers and one of the junkers has gone across to explore the other crate. Uh, one of them reports over the radio that uh, there's another body showing uh, similar um, signs of injury over in the other corner. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll wander over there and I'll do a quick roll. You don't have to see. roll for that. You can you can see no, essentially okay. exactly the same. Exactly okay, the same. Okay, fantastic then. The the face mask is cracked in. Um, well, this not is fantastic a young woman. for him. Well, <laughs> yeah, this, this this is a young woman. Uh, there's some blood splatter on the corner of the, the doors behind her. Um, other, other than that, things seem perfectly normal in here, apart from two people who Mangled. appear to have had their faces smashed okay. in. Um, okay. Seems reasonably standard operation so far. Okay. Is there any sort of... Um map or layout indicators in here or did we get that from our connection to the computer you haven't gotten anything from the connection to the computer the computer all it did was say to go away yeah hello <laughs> abide by the law piss off okay essentially yeah <laughs> that that was what it said it, it it they they didn't provide you with a map to their station no okay. and then there's nothing like a placard in here that we've noticed with a map or anything okay Nope. So uh, there uh, are some colored lines on the floor, mm -hmm. but what the colored lines on the floor mean, you have no idea. Okay. Um, there, there's a red, blue, and a green line that run across the floor, but uh, what they mean, who knows? Okay, so as I'm continuing my check through here, I am radioing over to Sam and Darren to s ask what they're seeing up those stairs, and the same to Sarah Vok to ask what yeah. he's noticed for the sound, because that was the general vicinity of the random high-pitched sound, and if there's anything that he can notice from the corridor leading down to the next stairway to try to figure out where we're going as I'm doing a quick self-catalog of, yes, we'll take this, no, we'll take that, and whatever. Sarek, roll a spot for me. Okay. Nineteen Ooh, plus what seven? Nine. No, oh plus nine, eight, yeah. Twenty-eight. Oh. Um. So, uh, Saverick is uh, told over the radio by um, Jake. Jake, that uh, what what what's going on? What can you see? There was a sound over there when I was checking the uh, uh, vibro sensor. Um. And Saverick looks down at the body, and there is a tiny, tiny movement. Tiny, tiny movement of the woman's left hand. Uh, unless you were staring at it intently, you wouldn't have spotted it. Um, but just by chance, uh, very sharp eyed, you pick up the fact that one of her fingers, still inside the spacesuit, is tapping on the floor. Hmm. Okay. Just a rhythmic tap. tap oh, so that's the tap, rhythm we found. Tap, okay. Tap. Tap. That tap. still leaves an unknown. Okay, so... um random high pitch thingy that happens every once in a while. Yep. Okay. There is okay, so still unknown sounds. Sounds. That's uh that's that's worrisome. I'm gonna let everyone know that yeah she's dead, but still moving. That's kind of a so important no. One of the engineers and junkers come come over to, to come and have a look at this because it's like what? What do you mean she's dead but moving? Her fingers tap on the floor but she's quite obviously no longer with the living. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as they say. I'm going to run over here as well. Question regarding the suits we are wearing. Do they have an external status display? Or can I plug in to see her vital readings? Can I interface with her suit? <clears throat> um, if, you, if you were to um, roll her onto her front, then you could gain access to the uh, engineering pack that she's got on her back, which is uh, linked to her life support system. And you could use that just as you could with the, the gauges on the back of a, a scuba diver to pick up what the suit is detecting. Okay, that's what I want to do. Let's see if there's okay. any life signs at all coming from this or whether it is a dead <laughs> body and there's something else we have to worry about. 
Roll initiative, please. Okay, I need a 20. Ooh. Three! <laughs> Plus two initiative modifiers, so I got a five. Uh, eight and... Okay, so, um, the, the zombie rolled a 19. Zombie? Frank, God you're, damn you're, it. You're, essen you're essentially meeting space zombie now. Um, nice. So, roll and roll. 19 and 18. Okay. So, what happens is that uh, as you roll the corpse, over the the woman over um there is a <laughs> flicker um of sort of static across the back of her backpack and her hand snaps out and wraps around the armored boot of uh, our junker here um and there is a bit of a sickening crack sound as her armored gauntlet uh basically crushes down on his boot oh strong ass and zombie breaks his ankle immediately um, and he oh, falls damn. screaming to the floor <laughs> so uh, the next one to act would be uh, Savrik alright yeah I'm gonna roll to see where is it pick up my uh, holdout and put a bullet in the back of its head really? yup it's a space zombie dude I'm we don't chance. even know it's a oh, space God. zombie We've got uh, a woman inside. Yes, we, we've got a it startled just... woman who's been laying on the floor inside a spacesuit. Strength to crush. Yes, but we should we I not try to it. retain her to see if she can pay us for the salvage of herself and nope. medical attention? A threat to me, a threat to the team. Nope, bullet in the back of the head. But I. Really okay, so we got the cleaner so trying to shoot her. Okay. I just yeah, you've got the I cleaner just, trying don't. to clean things up. <laughs> Yeah, be careful and I he roll doesn't a three. shoot the junker. You roll a three. Um, yeah. Savrik freaks out because this person is most certainly dead because Savrik examined them himself and he is a very good um, person when it comes to determining whether someone's dead or not. After all, when you try to determine whether someone's telling the truth or not, you kind of need them alive. Mm. Um, oh, uh, quick question, pistol. or I'll let you, sorry, do the do the thing first. He grabs his pistol from his, his waistband, he discharges one of his uh, precious 40 ACP rounds um, straight into the uh, woman. And he rolled a three, he still gets... Into the floor. Oh, he misses yep. and smacks into the floor. Uh, straight, okay. Yeah, he, he misses and the, the bullet smacks into the floor next to her, sending up sparks and, and small bits of shrapnel in multiple directions. Um, the the woman is completely silent, by the way. She she rolled over and she grabbed this guy's ankle and broke this guy's ankle. Um with, with without really making any noise other than the noise of movement. As she rolled over, a pool of blood flowed out of her um suit and pooled underneath her head. Oh, okay. Uh no, the question so, I was so... gonna ask is whether I had actually made it over here because I'm crossing a wide room, but apparently I have because I initiated rolling her over, so that's a self answered question. Yep. Okay, so um, yep. <laughs> after this has happened, and now I'm noticing that, holy crap, yes, there's no way this person is living with that much blood pooling out of their suit, I grab the tool I'm most familiar with, bringing out my magnetic thingamajig giant cutting tool from space, <laughs> space cutter, and um, yeah, igni ignite the cutting beam or coil into the thing's chest while pulling upwards. Okay, so do an attack roll for me. Please, please, please don't be a 2. An 11! Yes! I was expecting a 1. Or no, sorry, my damage roll with that is 2 8s, isn't it? Yep, 2 8s. Sorry about that. I forgot. Oh, I still had to have the attack to see if I did it or whether I missed horribly. Yep. Yep. Okay, wow. 7 plus 8, 15. Nice. nice. So, um, you sling off your um, large cutting tool that's about the size of a large chainsaw off your shoulder. Uh, you jam the uh, front end against the woman's chest and you discharge the double magnetic field. The way the tool works is it creates two opposing magnetic fields that heat things up and pull them to pieces. 
um, working primarily on ferrous objects. Uh, the woman's spacesuit does contain some ferrous metal. So basically, I just pulled her spacesuit through her chest. Essentially, you've just ripped her spacesuit through her body, <laughs> um, doing a, a ton of damage at the, at the um, sort of source. You've broken most of her ribs, ripped out her sternum. Um, you've destroyed most of her body. Uh, the only problem is that her hand still appears to be closing on uh, our junker friend's ankle. Uh, our junker friend's turn is to fall over on the ground and scream. Um, he's trying to draw out his um, he's trying to draw out his hold pistol, but um, wow, he actually manages to draw out his hold pistol um, as a full round action, despite the fact that he's essentially stunned. Um, oh wow. Hmm. So he, he scored a 19. He actually managed to keep the frame of mind to draw out his holdout pistol and, and start waving it in the direction of the corpse. I wouldn't trust his aim if I were you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the engineer just turns and fucking pegs it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, since we're in combat, this is turn-based. So is Saravok up next, or are we waiting for the four other characters to do their thing? Or are they unaware of this? Or I guess we've all been uh, they, yelling over radios. <laughs> like, yeah, holy shit! Uh, they, <laughs> they are moving together and drawing hold at pistols um, because the best thing to do when it comes to survival is to make a tight group and bring firepower to bear. Um, mm -hmm. So they're moving together <laughs> and making a group on that side and they're all drawing hold at pistols. Uh, mm -hmm. In the meantime, it's actually the zombies' turn next. So... Uh, Six. Okay, so uh, as she's doing a grapple check, she has hold of this guy. He's got to roll against her, and he rolls a three. <laughs> so uh, she manages to keep hold of him, and uh... ooh, lovely. Um, so essentially, she's just ripped this guy's foot off. Oh, okay. Uh, she has done enough damage to bring him below zero hit points, which means he's not dead but he's essentially incapacitated. He's no longer functioning. Um, and she has managed to rip this guy's foot off. Okay. Shit. My turn. Yep. All right. Uh, I'm going to quick draw my uh, arm blade and try and take it out. Try to get a headshot of some... Oh, my God. Arm That's blade. Going. Try and take it out with a headshot here. Let's see what I get. Oh, so you equip your arm blade as your move action or standard yeah. action, and then you're doing your... Uh, he has quick draw, which means that he's allowed to draw weapons as a free action. Oh, sweet. Um, yeah. So he, he's... Um, roll the 10, he has... What his, what's his attack roll is... Ant, plus 8. Um, so you've rolled out with a, uh, an 18, and you've managed to basically... Um, flick out a blade from the inside of your arm and jam it into this person's uh, face. Uh, already badly damaged face. As you do so, um, your blade sinks into them and deals damage. Right, which would be is... 2d4. 1d4. 2d4. Well, while he's penetrating this woman's face, I'm going to go hit the washroom. Okie dokie. Four. <laughs> Okay, oh my god, my thing's not working. What is that? There you go. So I got four and two, six. All right. So you deal six damage to this uh, woman's head. Your blade sinks in and there's a nasty squelch noise. Um, and the, the body kind of flinches a little bit. Um, but as far as you can tell, the arms are still moving. Oh, damn. Okay. Shit. <laughs> I have nothing for that then. Okay. It's like, it's like some dead space shit. God, it's member him or something. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm using a set of variant rules from a horror game to do with um, uh, things that live but aren't living. And they are okay. hard to kill. <laughs> okay. Like proper hard to kill. I like it. <laughs> Uh, 
we'll wait for uh, Toad to come back. Um, but what I would recommend you do, and actually I will uh, do it for you because I'm the admin, um, is if I give you 2d4 like that, so you can actually roll your damage as there one. There you go. Yeah, I was looking extra for that ability. Um, Fantastic. And also, uh, I think you've got a holdout pistol that does 2d6, so I'll give you an extra d6 as well. There we go. That does 2d6, okay. D4s, well, no, D6s, and I have, D20s. I have three. I have, for the Pyrenees, like it's three D6. Damn. Uh, what's three D6? Oh, the uh, yes, for the, on the third turn. Pyrenees, like, dispenser. Uh, yes, that's if you manage to hold it against someone for three rounds. Because uh, okay. it, it, it basically does more and more damage the longer you press it against somebody. Yeah. Just sexy, I like that. So, um, Toad, you're up. Okay, uh, uh, so Maverick, he's uh, penetrated her face and yep. drew his, or no, his pistol's already drawn. What else do we, what else happened, or is that it? Uh, she she now has a blade in her face. Arms still moving. Uh, basically, it, her just... face and most of her head has been destroyed, but her arms are still moving. Um, there's not much blood because it's all bled out already, yeah. it's all in the pool on the floor. Um, and still, she's making no noise whatsoever. That is the creepiest thing, that all this is happening right. without sound. Like, it's not screaming at us or anything. Um, how much danger are we in of the wild flail? Like, is it moving knowingly, or is it flailing now because of damage taken? Uh, the arms seem to be uh, searching. They seem to be um, moving about, grasping, um, searching. One thing you do notice is that periodically, uh, one of its hands seems to come down and hit the floor. Uh, and when it does that, it seems to get a much better idea of where you are, and it starts reaching towards the nearest person, which would be Savrak. Okay, so it's okay. it's searching. That's its tap. It's using a vibration search. Okay. Um, what do I have in my inventory that I can use against this thing? Not a whole lot. Uh, what sort um, of floor? Is it a metallic plate or is it a softer floor? It is a metal floor. It's a metal floor. Mm, so very unlikely that I'd be able to impale anything through it. Mm. Um, I will give you a uh, bit of information mm -hmm. that um, basically um, it is to a certain extent going to be kind of like um, obvious, which is that at the moment, um, its legs aren't moving, its arms are flailing about, um, but it seems to be dependent, as always, and, and as you'd expect, on the joints in the arms and on the weight of the body to keep the arms moving. Yep. Um, if you were to essentially remove, it, remove chunks from it, mm -hmm. uh, those chunks would be as ineffective as a hand sitting on a desk. All it could be basically do would be provide a small amount of force to move itself about if, even if it was able to do anything if you disconnected it into pieces it probably wouldn't mm. be able to do anything okay my coil ripper then uh how am i to count the charge rate of it or do i just assume that i can salvage charge from the from the crates around us uh you have 20 charges per magazine um you have 20 charges per magazine, and I presume at least that um, you started with a full magazine. Um, okay. You can get more magazines from your ship. You may be able to find magazines elsewhere. Okay, so you're doing the counter in, for me. Uh, Thank you. So, so there's my there you thingy. So we're at 19 there. Okay. Just because, yeah, I was, I was thinking of trying to impale it with the crowbar to the ground, but being that it's on a metal plate, that would be fairly ineffective. Okay. okay. So, uh, like and the coil ripper, is there enough iron content in a body that it can act on a body only, or is it on a body itself, or only on the suit surrounding the body? Uh, it would need to act on some kind of metal. If you were to uh, basically pin the uh, woman's arm to the deck plate with the uh, coil ripper and discharge it, you'd probably melt a chunk out of the rep, uh, deck plate and rip a piece up through her arm. Okay. Uh, 
how quickly can I draw the cable in my backpack? Or in uh, my inventory? It would, take a full round. it would take a full round for you to dig it out of the pocket that it's stashed in. And what kind? It's called min wire. So, uh, basically thin wire? It's aluminium steel. Yeah, it's a, a thin piece of aluminium okay. steel wire capable of retaining about 500 pounds before it snaps. Okay, and then the periodic loops in it for hooks, what, di what diameter are those loops? Uh, about an inch, inch and a half. So my crowbar would fit through it? Yep, your crowbar would go through. Okay, I draw my rope. Okay, you spend a round drawing your rope. Um, the uh, junker lying on the floor spends his round slowly bleeding to death. Um, from the hole where his leg used to be. Um, the engineer runs back over here. There's a lot of excited babble um, over the radios, and basically you get uh, um, Samuel, who is your um, ex-explorer, mm -hmm. um, ex-station uh, explorer, uh, yelling at you two to get the hell out of the way because all five of them have now drawn their holdout pistols and they're intent upon basically filling the area you're standing with an awfully large amount of uh, flying metal. Okay. Hey. Servox up next then, or zombie up next? Uh, zombie is up next. Um, zombie is still flailing its arms around. Okay. Uh, one second, let me check your sheets. What What are your defense rolls? We have a 19 and a uh, 18. And uh, zombie managed the startling total of 6. <clears throat> Okay, <laughs> so for once the zombies seem to be rolling badly, and that bloody dice is in exactly the wrong fucking place. Mm -hmm. mm, how do we get that out of there? Oh, there we go. There we, we got go. It. Yay! Yeah. Okay. You have to come at um, it from the opposite angle, or so, a low enough angle. Um, yeah. The zombie's arms flail about. Yeah. It makes a grab for Savrick, but um, misses entirely and bangs its, uh, bangs its wrists on the floor again to try and sort of relocate where Savrick is. Um, and again, like, despite the fact that its suit hits the floor with a clang, and despite the fact that its arms are flicking about, it, it's, it's not growling, it's not screaming, it's not hissing. Um, you get the sound of the back of its helmet hitting the floor every now and then, but primarily it's just, just dead silent. That's Damn. so right, weird. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll to take its hand off then. Okay. With what? Roll oh, roll I guess you got your blade. The junker. Oh, <laughs> Swish, clang! You hit the floor. <laughs> I roll. However, I do have a bonus. What's my bonus to my melee? Uh, uh, you get uh, a eight. Um, eight. Plus eight yeah. bonus. So you. Yeah, uh, you roll the 14, 14, which this thing has a higher defense defense than that. Oh, so, that's right, uh, it's 19. Yeah. Right, I'm handicapped. My bad. Mm. <laughs> okay, okay, so I'm up okay. now? Yeah, you're up now. Yeah. Okay, so I grab the arm opposite the junker that was tapping on the ground. I quickly wrap a few wraps of cable around it, standing on one end of the cable, placing my crowbar through the other, and then giving it a good reef, prying off the ground with the crowbar on the tightly wrapped uh, cable, trying to sever in multiple places as it wraps around the arm through the suit and okay, arm. Okay. And I have so to roll d20 your, for on that. Your sheet. Yep, on your sheet you have a grapple check. Um, roll d20 and add your grapple bonus. So I got a 8 with a grapple bonus of... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Is that the top sheet or bottom sheet? Uh, top page, uh, underneath your attacks. Uh, grapple check is your... Is plus 11 deaths, plus, plus 6. Uh, plus 11, so you also get uh, plus 2 because it's an unarmed... Uh, basically, you're, you're, you're grappling with someone. Mm -hmm. And... Um, for that, I would say you're probably going to do a D8 plus your strength bonus, which is plus 4, so D8 plus 4 for damage. A 6, six or four, ten. 10. The wire bites in and uh, cuts into the uniform. It seems to sever the muscle rather than the bone. You don't manage to sever the limb, mm -hmm. but you seem to be able to basically par the muscle down to the bone, and you hear the... the as the, the cable grates against bone, which is a delightful sound. 
Um, Especially when everything else here is silence. Oh. Hmm? But, well, like, there, there's no Cut screaming from this point. thing, so, like, it's just silence, and then you hear, I'm gonna assume, like, a coiled or, like, spun, serrated type rope just grating yep. against bone <laughs> and suit, and, oh, that would just be such a horrible noise in the silence. Um, and as would be expected when you cut those muscles, when you cut the tendons, mm -hmm. um, the muscles bunch up at one end, the tendons bunch up, uh, the opposite side of the muscle bunches up at the other end, and that joint becomes useless. So um, you wrapped it around her sort of like uh, mid to low arm. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially now her hand is flopping uselessly and that arm is is, is waving about at the shoulder joint um, with, with a, what looks like completely un tense hand on the end of it um, okay. essentially just flopping about in the air so i've neutralized that arm and, perfect and the other arm is still going all this while um your delightful engineer friends are screaming <clears throat> at you to get the fuck out of the way and all five of them have uh hold out pistols in hand yeah all right good we, we've, we've been dealing with this thing it's like we are i already cut a hole through its chest filling it through a Full um, of little yeah. pieces of magnesium or lead aren't going to do a whole lot. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, it is Zombie's turn, and Zombie again attacks uh, Savrik because he's the one who's closest. Oh, the zombie manages to wrap an arm around your um, your leg. So it let go of the other guy. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's it's ripped the other guy's leg off. Uh, so oh, yeah, that's right. The okay, so it's not just. Gordon. Okay, so it's not doing nothing. That leg. All right, I will. I guess I got to roll a grapple check or. Uh, nope, it's just doing a grab attack. No. So it's not actually a grapple. Oh. It's just doing a grab attack. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Essentially, it's 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 grabbed hold of your leg as 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 a, a simulation of a bludgeoning attack, um, and okay. you take seven damage as its uh, hand clamps down on your leg. Yeah. Oh, and did you set yourself up with um, the yeah, half did. damage or, or half health, yeah, or did you put it out with uh, the full? Oh, no, sorry. Um, when, I, when I say half health, I mean like the, the number I've given you is, is half health. I've oh, so I'm not three. starting at 14. Okay. No, no, you're starting at 28. You started at 19. Okay. Because I was like, oh crap, they took seven damage. That would have been half my health. <laughs> no, no. Okay. It's almost half mine, though. Alright. Um, I guess it's my roll. I hope I don't do something stupid. I'll roll to cut this guy's... Cut its hand off that has a hold of me and... Hopefully not miss. <laughs> 19. Oh. Thankfully. 27. 26. Oh, and we have lost a droid. Um, damn it. God damn it. This is the problem with people who aren't used to Steam chat. They end up exiting it out all the time. Yeah. One second. Hey. Back. Yay! There, you go. there we go. Okay. Hey. Uh, so I assume you're using your um, arm blade. Yeah. So roll off, off the damage. Off. I rolled a nineteen. So 26. Rolled, yep. Yep, and roll damage for your arm blade, because that's 
far and away a hit. Yeah, all right. That's... Oh my god, I thought I had them together. Oh shit. Four. Wow. Four. And a two. And two. No, uh, they were, no like, it was four in total. They were both twos. Oh, they were both twos. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and because it's melee, as always, um, you get to add your strength, which is three. Um, so you've got a seven, and um, because it's holding on to your ankle, you've got a, a, a <clears> nice, <throat> nice opportunity to basically lever your blade down against its arm, and you slice it off at the wrist. And again, you have a situation where the hand immediately goes floppy, and um, the arm is still flailing and moving. But essentially now, you've got two flailing arms that have no way of gripping things. And as far as you can tell, this thing has shown no evidence of being able to move. Uh, your junker friend is still quietly bleeding out by himself on the floor, mm -hmm. uh, having passed out. The um, field bag we have, does it have like a... Um, uh, all-purpose biogel uh, that we can yeah. just inject into the wound? Or, uh, I nope. or is this guy just screwed? Blast, blast Toad, or, or, or every single one of you is carrying a basic uh, survival rescue kit, uh, which includes uh, something called med tape, mm -hmm. uh, which is essentially a combination between a bandage and super glue infused duct tape, um, which is used for closing wounds in an emergency. Mm -hmm. um, very rough and ready. Savrick is carrying a uh, suitcase sized. Uh, Basic, uh, basic medic box on medic box on his back because that's the the job he signed on for was medic uh, on the ship. Um, he has some experience in treating severe wounds. He has some more advanced bits and pieces, including uh, some co coagulant injections and um, some uh, air atmospheric hardening gel, which is a bit like the suit hardening gel, but safe to use on skin um, in his medic box. Okay. Um, so, what are you going to do with your turn, Blaster Toad? Uh, so we've pretty much disabled this thing it's just flailing about so i'm gonna grab yep. it as its legs since that is kind of out of its area and try to drag it to this corner just so basically it's out of the way and we can continue passing by without this thing um just like flailing and hitting us in the knees or something <laughs> okay um so you grab that corpse and you drag it um across the room around the corner um and it's still flailing its arms, but its legs yeah. seem completely useless. Yeah, so I just uh, the throw it in the middle team... there and be like, screw this thing, it's... Yeah. The rest of the team are slightly freaking out, but um, your Samuel, the survivor, comes and... Um, Samuel, the explorer, comes and, and some kind of looks, and, and basically his full comp contribution to the situation is, that's some fucked up shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they're... Everyone is currently looking over into this side of the um, cargo bay. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, the shit! Issue with that is, uh, yeah, the slight issue with that is... <laughs> One! Yeah. Oh. Yes! He froze. Nope. I froze. My audio is all messed up, guys. I can hear you. Okay. Well, I can't hear him at all. Yeah, droid's gone again. Yo, droid, oh, you with us? It. Hello? The droid? Either way, it was one. Hello! Yay! Issues! Yeah. I'll try unplugging and replugging? I don't know. Alright. Do you just want to jump back on Discord? And we'll try it. If you want to join the channel, then at yeah. least we can see if it's bad between us. Yeah. We've got the good Hello? connection. There we go. Oh, oh, okay. okay. I'm, I'm gonna X my X to that then. Yeah, double echo. Um, so everyone was looking away on the uh, left hand side while you two dealt with this thing. Uh, no one was looking behind you where the other corpse was. Um, and uh, surprise, surprise, um, you hear a clang, 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 clang. 
um, of uh, spacesuit boots on a metal floor. Well, spacesuit and... boot, because one of them was off in the corner. Yeah, yeah, spacesuit boot on the metal floor. Um, and you turn around in time to see the other corpse uh, basically attempt to body slam um, one of the junkers and miss terribly and stumble and uh, <laughs> flop slightly. Um, and it is back to Savrick's turn. All right. Um, if I yell at them to make sure they disable its hands, does that count as a turn, or is that I can do that and I can treat this dude's injuries because he's kind of foobar? Yeah, you can you can yell and uh, take an action to um, right, yeah, basically begin I'm treating figured. that guy's injuries. Yeah, I'll, I'll yell at them, and let them uh, take off their hands so they can't do anything. That's the only thing that seems to work for now. And okay, and I'm gonna treat his wounds. And oh my god, good thing. What do I get? Do I have to roll, I assume? Yes, you have to roll. I, uh, you yeah, roll and you add your treat four. injury to it. Uh, so, four, 18. Ooh. Yep. Okay, 18. 18's, 18's enough to stabilize. So, 18's enough, especially with your your um, uh, increased medical kit, your, your full-on medical kit rather than first aid kit. 18 okay. is enough for you to stabilize, which means he's no longer losing hit points. Uh, for, the, for those who don't know, in D&D, you're in 2020. When you reach zero hit points, you become... Um, basically uh rendered useless in a fight rendered useless mm. for doing anything you can't act anymore yeah um and you start losing hit points every round one hit point around unless you get attacked by something uh once you reach minus 10 you are rendered dead okay um this guy ran it managed to get himself to minus six because he bled out for three rounds after mm -hmm. being rendered to minus three by the uh zombie uh so he's yeah. been stabilized which means he's no longer losing hit points but he's still essentially an unconscious useless lump okay uh this staggering idiot zombie that just flopped uh is he falling yep. on his face or his back uh, face because he's okay. trying to grab hold of it uh oh you say he's trying to grab hold so his arms are working as well Yes. Okay. His legs and arms are both working. Okay. Can I cover a distance in a single that distance in a single move? Uh, you'd from have myself. To use your, you'd have to use your full round because you can move six squares in a in a round. So you'd, you'd have to either uh, do a full round or do a charge attack. Um, you could move six squares and then you would be just in range to use your hold that pistol. Okay. Um. So yeah, I'll. I'll move to be just in range. And yep. so now I can still use the pistol or I'd have to equip it as my second uh, you move? Can, you uh, uh, would have to draw it as your second move because you don't have quick draw. Okay, so I actually I draw my my cutter Magnetic again. Magnetic coil ripper. Yeah, coil ripper. Okay. And that's my um, turn because that's as far so, as I can get. Yep, everyone else goes first. Um, the explorer pegs it round to the stairs and draws his holdout pistol. Um, then we basically have a random flee um, in, in directions as each person flees, turns, and there is a sort of volley of um, volley of rounds thrown out in direction of, of, of this particular creature hmm. uh, by multiple different people. 12... 14 and 16. So one of those rounds actually manages to land, which is a small miracle. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hold that pistol deals its damage, which is almost max damage. And um, the pistol slams oh. into the uh, creature's uh, armored bot or unarmored spacesuit, cuts through it, and uh, a brand new hole appears. With surprisingly little blood, just it, it, yeah. just a hole. It, it goes um, through. Um, at what point in the body? Like, did it disable any joints or no? Nope, just okay, passed just through the, main of the body. Okay. Basic rules of firing: aim for the center mass. Mm -hmm. I was just All hoping right. in a panic shot that maybe the spread would have got them somewhere yeah. on a limb damage. So Savrik is uh, next. All right, uh, so he's stabilized, but, but can he? Can I get him any healthier in the current situation, or, or is um, it not often? Once once you've rolled your combat medical check, you kind of, you, you're okay. done with your combat right, medic. So yeah, I'm gonna move move up there then. As one, two, three, four, as possible. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can move yourself to here, 
Or you can take okay. a run action and, and move yourself six more squares if you want to take a full run uh, action. I will take the full run action. Okay. If, Bonk. Is this thing still laying down? It's laying down at the moment because it hasn't had its turn yet. Yep. Okay. Oh, and its turn's next, or am I up next? Uh, you're up next. Yep. Okay, so it's still laying, and it's face down? It is face down, yes. Okay. I run up, stomp my boot on the back of its head, and fire off my magnetic coil ripper right in between the shoulders, trying to disable the two shoulders. Okay. Roll so, for it. Do I hit? Do I hit? Do I hit? Come on, it's like point blank 14. Yep, you hit. Easily hit. And then damage is three. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Piece of crap. So, basically, you run up behind it, you jam your magnetic coil ripper against its back, the coil ripper discharges, and all of the metal in the suit's backpack gets ripped up uh, um, and broken open, but the magnetic field doesn't actually manage to reach any metal underneath the body. So, the body gets flash burnt along the back um, from where the metal heated up behind it, um, unfortunately. Yay, so now I'm standing on the head of a thing, blocking other people's shots, and I haven't disabled its arms. Correct. Um, awesome situation! So, the whole time this has been going on, this thing again has made no particular sound, but its eyes have been locked on our delightful little engineer here, um, the person it first charged. And it kind of shrugs Blaster Toad's foot off and scuttles along the floor um, straight at this guy. Huh. Okay. Almost crab-like in its scuttling. And uh, let's see what happens when it gets there. It indeed manages to get hold of him. And it grabs him with both hands. And uh, basically it wraps both its hands around the guy's waist uh, and uh, starts crushing him. Very similar to what the other one did with the person's ankle. And okay. <laughs> bearing in mind, you're wearing slightly armored spacesuits. This, like, if you were to give each other a bear hug, you probably wouldn't even feel it. Mm -hmm. This thing appears to be breaking the guy's spine through his suit. Okay. Okay. So everyone else has their turn, and we have another barrage of um, holdout pistol fire because, you know, it didn't work the first time, so why the fuck not? <laughs> They're not the smartest cookies when it comes to, you know, evil zombies attacking them. And we have a miss. We have a miss. And we have a hit. Yay! And again, the bullet smacks in and does very little damage. It, it, it pops a hole through the guy, but uh, doesn't actually damage anything significant. Um, we are Ooh, using... Uh, by the way, uh, Blaster Toad, I, mm -hmm. I didn't tell this to um, 50 Foot, but I don't know if I told it to you. We are using a slightly um, modified version of rules for these guys, which come from a how to deal with undead things. And essentially, they are very, very hard to destroy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Think they, don't, dead they don't essentially have uh, central hit point pools. Mm, yeah. um, they have um, something a little bit more complicated, which is why I have a couple of well, sheets of... I I'm going to keep doing stuff, and I'll learn it by the reaction I'm given by you. Yep. By how to take care of these. Cause, yeah, I'm a guy that's used to work on salvaging satellites, now dealing with corpses that tend to move without even after destroying the head. Like, oh, all yep. the zombie movie rules no longer apply. Great. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh. So 50's up next, right? And yep, done 50's up next. Nothing. All right. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and take off one or both of its hands. If actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stab it right in the spine, right between the shoulder blade, top to the neck. See if I can sever everything all at once. Okay. So you can yeah, manage so to 15. get fifteen. Nope. Uh. You, uh, your blade skitters off the uh, messed up metal chunks that have been left of the uh, backpack attached to the spacesuit. Son of a bitch, Jaden. <laughs> Toad! <laughs> you son of a bitch! 
It's entirely your fault yeah. that I dislike him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right. Damn. That's okay. unfortunate. So this thing, I'm guessing its pelvis is, like, dragged across the ground right now as it's, like, arced up to grab hold of this guy's midsection? Or uh, is he kind of, like, kneeling? It, he's he's almost in, like, um, I don't know if you know what a bear crawl is. Um, it's okay, a bit yeah. like up on toes, um, hips up in the air, and he, he yeah. almost a bit like a rugby tackle position. Okay. So then, do -do 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 -do, I jam my coil ripper right into its ass so that everything from its spacesuit could be pulled through its body and try okay. another fire to try to get the most metal content passing through it. I'm gonna mute myself. So I got a one, <laughs> but 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 I've got a point blank thing. I've got a plus one to hit with ranged weapons below thirty feet. Yeah, so one that's... is a critical failure. So it doesn't. So matter. I completely missed its ass and just kind of like no, no, no. flailed even my gun worse. up into its ear. Even worse than that, roll a no, percentile for me. Okay, what's a percentile again? <laughs> this and this together. Okay. Roll those two together. <laughs> you want to get anything Shit. under a 50. I got a 7. So, you got a... Uh, well, you got... Um, a 19, because you take the 10 digit off oh, the I don't... unit off the other. Okay. Uh, so, you, you got a, a 16, sorry. You got a 16, so you get under 50%. So, you, you run up and you, you jam your magnetic coil ripper into it, and your magnetic coil ripper goes... <laughs> And you forgot to cycle the charge chamber before you did this. Um, whoops. <laughs> oh. So you, you, you basically forgot to charge the pulse emitter on the um, yeah, I forgot, magnetic coils. I forgot to re-roll <laughs> or reload or whatever after shot. Yep. And, yeah. So, so, you uh, just <laughs> so you basically now have a zombie that you've attempted to ainly violate. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, it's the zombie's turn again, and um, uh, we have zombie on the left, human on the right, and the zombie wins that one, I'm afraid, because the zombie is significantly stronger. And uh, let's see what happens to this poor gentleman whose hit points are very, very low. Um, yeah, uh, the, the zombie's arms compress further. And there is a, a rather disgusting sound as several pieces of the armored spacesuit crack, and a kind of a wet sound, a bit like <clears> someone <throat> tearing um, tearing a wet piece of cloth. And uh, the the guy just screams. The um, the person being held just screams, and then stops screaming quite suddenly. Um, and the uh, guy's waist that was originally about 40 inches has been compressed by the zombie's arms down to about 20 inches. Mm. Um, <laughs> okay. And the other three guys at this point are freaking out um, and fire uh, again, fire a barrage of shots, despite the fact you're standing right next to the, the zombie. And we get one hit again. And that hit does bugger all. Moving on, Savak. <laughs> Uh, Your turn. God. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try again. Just take its head off if it's that. That hopefully it's gonna work. Okay, so you actually managed to hit this time. That's good. Thank God. All right, and double D fours. Three and good four. Damage. Oh, you managed to do lovely damage. Um, so you jam your um blade into the gap between the top of the the uh, spacesuit backpack and the helmet and you kind of wiggle it about a bit and and you've you've cut the thing's head off um again this surprisingly little blood and the the helmet flops um now attached to the suit basically by a, a semi semi rigid ring of fabric around two thirds of the the neck um and the thing is still squeezing this guy <laughs> son of a bitch <laughs> so yeah destroying okay. these <laughs> The, you know, spinal column doesn't seem to be working. Okay. All right. Uh, so my magnetic coil ripper 
the magnetic field, can it pull something through, or does it just kind of, like, melt and pull stuff? You also uh, have a crowbar to use. You, you can deal direct damage basically by ripping pieces of metal, because it, it will melt things and attempt to rip metal apart, which of course means you have bits of metal moving yeah. quite quickly and quite violently in, in directions. Okay. So you can uh, deal damage. As part of my move turn, can I try to throw something in a direction? Uh, you can throw as a move, move action, yep. Okay. So in that case, I want to attempt to throw my crowbar underneath this thing as it's kind of in that crawl position and then as my attack fire my weapon hopefully pulling pieces of the crowbar through it now okay that's fine um so you need to roll your attack 13 and you hit good and you need to roll your damage Eight. Seven and eight. And now you also need to roll your damage again. Same damage? Same it... damage. Four. So your crowbar's slightly bent now. Um, because unfortunately the magnetic coil ripper combined mm -hmm. with your own natural ability to damage things has managed to damage your crowbar. Uh, so your crowbar's got a nice dent. Um, it's kind of bent into a sort of semi-U shape now. But it did get pulled up through the zombie, and you've just ripped massive chunks out of uh, our dead corpse's uh, body. Okay. Um, Anything to disable any parts? Do you, like I end up pulling it through the pelvis or through the chest area? You've like, done, you've done enough Have I disabled damage? a limb? Is basically You've done enough damage to... Um, actually, I tell you what, I will, rather than ad hoc this, I will roll it on the damage table that they gave me. So I get a 21. So you're, have, you have managed to... Table, 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 table... You have managed to break one of its legs. Okay. So you've managed to disable one of its legs with that much damage. Well done. You only just broke the damage threshold for actually dealing damage to this thing, by the way. Oh. <laughs> like, the pistol shots have been doing six and seven damage pretty reliably, and they haven't been able to break the, pist the, the damage threshold. <laughs> Holy crap. So you just managed to break this thing's damage threshold. <laughs> okay, well, that's my turn. That's my two, two moves, I guess. So, um, the, the three people, the, the guys remaining, open fire with their pistols. Again, the jackholes. And like... we get, again, one hit. Again, one hit. This is like, this is like the, there's like one of these guys who actually knows how to use a fucking gun. Or, as all three of them are shooting, they randomly each get one hit now and again. <laughs> yep. And it didn't manage to break the threshold, so it's on to Savarik. Alright, I will, uh... Uh, I'll roll to take it off at the take off at least one of its arms so it can't have as much squeezing at the shoulder okay. or at, at the elbow do you hit? that's a good hit fantastic deal your melee damage oh come on let's try that again Oh my god, it's not me select this shit. Four Five. and one, plus your three strength because it's a melee attack. You manage to break the damage threshold, just. Um, so you uh, jam your blade in and you wiggle it about and you manage to uh, cut one of the shoulders, the nearest shoulder to you, you manage to cut it to pieces. So now this thing is is headless, it's missing one shoulder, although the hand's still flexing. Um, and it's it's had one of its legs destroyed, so it's now got an arm and an leg and a leg functioning. Okay. Oh, I did another discharge, so discharge on my thing. I'm down to seventeen shots. Okay. And I'm up again. You're yeah. up again. A one d six is the damage on that thing. Okay, so I take my now slightly or severely bent crowbar whatever state it's currently in, and I mm. attempt to jam it through the the other hip to disable the okay. other leg. With an 11, and what modifier do I add to that? Uh, you add your handheld attack, which is plus 11, so you get a 22. So you Nice! Okay. 
And then it was 1d6 for the crowbar? Plus your strength, which is plus 4. Okay. 10. 6. You break the damage threshold and you crack the thing's hip into pieces without any bone for the muscle to attach to. Um, the leg just flops there with the knee kicking spasmodically. And the thing falls onto its side, unable to keep a grip on anything because it's only got one functioning limb. Um, and it just lays there twitching in silence. And what about a guy that got his uh, everything squishied? Uh, he is dead. All right. So he's just dead. He hasn't moved. He's, there's no chance. Okay. Okay. Okay, it, it, making sure. it dealt enough damage that he bled out the, basically the same round that... Um, okay, that just making sure. Injured him. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> so you have... Right. Um, the combat has now essentially ended. Um, it's mopping up now more than anything else. Um, you have one corpse that is, is cut into pieces and, and non-functional. You have another corpse that is just flailing one arm spastically. Uh, you have a dead guy, um, a dead crew member. Um, you also have a live crew member with his leg um, covered in a combination of binder gel, coagulant gel, and uh, emergency binding strip to stop him bleeding to death. Um, hey, you had six seconds to stop him bleeding to death. <laughs> you you did what you could. Yeah, uh, um, right, and now 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 what what do you guys want to do? We're out of combat, so uh, off you go. Uh, um. Since this guy's dead and useless, can we scavenge not him for parts, but his items and split them up among the crew? Ammo and all related things consumable? Well, yeah, the only thing he has on him that is really kind of something you are limited with on your ship is his holdout rounds, um, yeah. which he managed to discharge three of. So you have a um, clip containing 37 holdout rounds. Um, okay, want to add that to one of your note cards? Alrighty. Uh, plus 37 so you, round. Yeah. Hold out. Pistol. Yep. So you have an extra clip for your, your holdout pistol. Um, other than that, everything else is kind of, you've got plenty on your ship. Uh, your ship has a decent stock of most things. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about scavenging up individual things. Mm -hmm. uh, while um, I was looking through these boxes, and it's got a bunch of supplies in that, would there be any compatible power sources for my ripper? that I would have found labeled in these boxes as I searched through them earlier. Uh, 48. Yeah, let's say you can find, with a 48, that's a reasonably high roll, let's say you can find a, uh, a, a compatible <clears throat> power cell that uh, you could, mostly jury rig, but you could rig into your... Um, Bring into your ripper, giving you another um, seventeen round clip of of um, of shells. So plus seventeen, okay. And there we go. So um, the remaining engineer and um, the remaining junker um, are going to take your uh, injured junker, and they're going to take him back to the ship, yeah. um, basically. Because you do have a small medical facility on the ship, um, as would be expected. Um, so they're going to take him, and they're going to uh, take him back onto the ship um, to to look after him. Okay. Um, we have two left and a okay. dead guy. And this is a yep. mining place? Like a mining station, you're saying? Uh, it is, as far or as you research can tell, some outpost. kind of re research outpost. Um, okay. Uh, okay, then. Is that an image we already want to get to? Uh, that That is a, a, just just a, a reference view for kind of what we're looking at zombie-wise, uh, okay. is that... Uh, these things are like they they can have flesh ripped off they can have bones exposed and as long as they still have functional joints as long as there's joints are... and tendons and muscles to pull them then it's yep functional okay 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 um so but would the zombies be affected by the cold cold of space cold 
hot and cold, would that affect them the way it affects us, joint wise? That is um, to to a certain extent. Like like if you if okay. you burn out, burn out their joints and things, like muscles will be less efficient in the cold, things like that. Okay, so um, that's yep. was, okay. Okay, so standard rules apply when it comes to yeah. Uh, if there okay. is space, does lack of oxygen feeding muscles cause them to be unusable? Or are they still it, movement in vacuum? Well, because if destroying the muscle system stops them, then would starving the muscle system stop them? Mm. They don't seem to have any need for eating, drinking, yeah. anything, so I, wouldn't, I would doubt the, the regular nutritional. Okay. You got any way in on this droid? Hello? Hello. There, there we go. go. He's back now. Yep. My bloody Discord. Uh, okay. You would have to take one of them out into a low oxygen environment and see what would happen. Um, okay. If you wanted to find out whether or not they were uh, vulnerable to oxygen. Yes, it would be a case of, you know, what happens when we do this, um, okay. as opposed to, I know this immediately. Okay. Um, um, so, quick, how much weigh in do we have on the crew? Like, we're just two dudes out of a bunch. How much weigh in do we have? Well, basically, you, you, you four, um, uh, the four that would be all four player characters if, if we had our full contingent of players mm -hmm. going, um, you are the more experienced guys. And the, the four guy, four other guys are basically um, sort of like workaday Joes. None of them have really worked in anything like this before. Uh, whereas you have experience in salvage, we have someone who's got experience dealing with human beings. Um, from a medical standpoint and from a killing them standpoint, we've got a guy who used to be an explorer and we've got a guy who um, used to be um, a, a technician and a, a, an advanced engineer. So you guys would have reasonably strong weight when it comes to deciding what's going on. Okay. But of course, they, they may disagree with you. Okay, so I want to ask Sarabok, is it Darren or Derek? Darren uh, and Samuel. Darren, yep. To all join me on a private channel for a moment. Do they agree? Oh. Okay. okay, so um, they, they agree to flip over to a private channel. Um, I am unfortunately going to... T I'm going to tell you this right out. Basically, in, in this game system, uh, there is a system called uh, Favorable. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, when you do things for and against NPCs, they become more or less favorable towards you. Okay, perfect. Uh, by by cutting out the uh, two conscious uh, crew members, um, um, uh, Mary and uh, Richard, um, you may have lost certain favorable points with them because now they're suspicious about what the fuck you're talking about without them. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, with, with the main deciding guys all together here, trying to see if we can reach a consensus, Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, let's start a conversation, and I am Jake, let's see, do I speak in third or first person, or how am I going to do this, let's just do a first person. Hey guys, this, this is, um, like, I, I, I know we're here, I'm all for danger, like, I came from a low orbit salvage ship, but is this place worth it? Like, what we're getting paid here... Are we dealing with this shit, or do we want to take off? Like, we got a perfectly good ship there, where nothing, nothing's out of the norm there. Do we head back to the company and say, hey, there's nothing we could do here? Like, we found nothing. We, we can do that, we've got enough votes here. Do we want to continue with these shenanigans? Okay. Uh, I, I, don't know. I think that if we... I want to find out more what happened here. I want to find out if... This is clearly not something normal. Come on, I this thought you were trying to get it, out of the business of, and this is my guy responding. I thought you were trying to get out of the business of dealing with bodies. Now you got bodies coming back to deal with you. Are you sure you want to continue this? I'd rather find out more about what's going on. I'm in it for personal gain as much as possible. The the whole disposal was just to. I mean, I I'll stay out of that, but I'm I'm in it. For the personal gain, I don't give a shit anybody anything else. Sa Samuel no kind of pipes in at this point. Samuel, here. Samuel pipes in at this point and, and replies with, um, or, or sort of enters the conversation. Hey, um, I used to explore planets for a living. I've seen some messed up shit, but 
dude, I'm 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 done with this. And what's Darren's response? Um, Darren's kind of sort of slightly off in his own world at the moment. Um, he he's possibly kind of in shock, maybe. Mm. Um, he 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 mumbles something about um, uh, how you use an industrial tool on a human being, and um, he, he seems to be a little bit confused as to like like he 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 ends the conversation with with that 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 that's for ships. What, what, that, that, that's for sure. It's sodomized uh, as human core. Yeah, you sodomized a human with a magnetic coil ripper. Yeah, it's, it's man, a mem- It's a that, memorable vision. It's yeah. It's it. To understand why he's a bit choked up uh, about that. I, I'm a salvage record guy. Okay, I, I, I'm not very yeah, proficient he, with firearms. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. Roll a listen check for me. Two. Twenty. Twenty. Um, Saverick. Yep. There, there's quite. Um, I mean, I know it's through multiple walls and the vacuum of space, but uh, you can feel uh, some quite heavy vibrations coming from behind you through the floor. All right. <laughs> All right, that Mac money, though. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, Behind him through the floor? I'm, yep. I'm going to let you guys in on the fact that, that some crazy shit's going down. I don't know what it is, but I can feel a rumbling behind my ass. Would you like that you're currently standing on the stairwells to the corridor into the base? Would you like to turn around and go back? I, I would like to, I would, can I, I can roll a, I'd like to hide. i like to, <laughs> i like to die. hide. You're going to die for cover. First, and then, and then just, yeah. Oh. Okay, that's not a bad hide with the amount of hide that you've got, actually. Um, actually, that's so, true, okay. So you, you sort of dive around the corner and, and, and um, sort of. Hide yourself away from the direction of the thing that you can hear. Uh, Blaster Toad, what would you like to do? Uh, I look at Sam knowingly and say, should we get out of here and run back through the stairwell? Okay, so you guys run back through the stairwell into the storage bay coming off the, the docking area. Um, and there's the wall in front of you and the doors. And um, the rumbling is coming from the other side of the doors out into the docking area. Wait, it's coming and... from the docking area? Yes, it's coming from the docking area. So I just ran towards the thing? Yep. <laughs> yep. Dude, why do you think I hid? I said Sorry, when when your character was facing like that and someone said behind, I thought like something's oh, gonna breach sorry. this wall. Um, no, sorry, oh. I, I, I I'm not coming from, from like, the room that we were from. in. Yeah, it's coming from the room, coming from the docking Okay, direction. well then that's a completely different piece of information. <laughs> Okay, uh, what are these multiple dots in front of us? Uh, this is a set of um, computer arrays and um, interface terminals that people arriving on the station would use to gather information Ooh. and... Um... So are they like library cubbyhole computers with a bit of privacy, or are they just like a desk with computers? You know airport telephones. Okay, yep. So you've got like a post with a computer on each side and shaders so that people aren't standing over you, but it's also standing up. Okay. So and um, then you to spend your time. the yeah. cargo containers on the sides. I'm assuming or, those, or those the, are the, the two by three containers on the sides are um, a set of uh, two cargo containers with a cargo trolley truck in the center. Cargo trolley truck in the center. Yep, uh, a little cargo trolley truck enough to to pick up most cargo containers. Because remember, this is a, a like a, a probably from the looks of it, 160 foot long corridor that leads into the main base. So they're not going to drag cargo themselves. Yeah. Okay. So they have a couple of cargo trolley co- trolley trucks. So I look at Sam and then I book it to take cover, kind of leaning over the truck, Sam, looking back you? at the door. Okay. I want to get some distance here. Like, okay. Screw yeah, this shit. My ass out of the way. Da- Darren's going to to match, um, and you can feel this thrumming in the floor get heavier and heavier and heavier. Um, it's it's a sensation that like um, 
most of you have felt a little bit before. Like it, it, you associate it with like powerful engines and things mm -hmm. like that spooling up. Um, there's no real windows on this section. Um, this this section you're in, there are windows on the corridor, but there are no real windows on this section. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do next? We're All just right, uh... feeling thrumming coming. Like, does it, it does it feel like it's coming, or that just there's like a steady thrumming or it's, it's getting like... it's getting louder and the, the like the vibration in the floor is getting stronger but it, there's no signs that it's like there's no direct indication it's coming closer to you no direct okay. indication it's coming closer all right seems there's no direct indication yeah. i'm not gonna and over the back there over the comms i i direct my voice towards savarok there I was like, yo, sneaky bastard who wants to stay. Why don't you go look through those windows for us? Before I do that, though, I'm going I'm to hail the two guys in the ship, back in our ship. on. Oh, um, yeah. They still got those guys. See what they know, if they know yep. what's going on. What is, what is the situation? What the shit? What, why? What is happening? So you flick over to the main channel, and um, you, you basically say that. You say... What the hell? What the shits? What's going on? Uh, to which you get um, Maria um, replying with, um, "We're not staying here. We're not staying here. We're not staying here." Oh crap! They just stole our ship. Yeah. <laughs> we should have booked it, dude. We should have. Oh. <laughs> Why do I have a feeling that no matter what, they would have left without us? No. Actually, it was fully legitimate. If you'd gone back to the med bay with them, um, <laughs> then they would have actually um, basically told you that they want to leave. And if any of you had argued with you in the slightest, it would have ended up in a fight. Uh, okay. You could, like, legitimately, <laughs> if you'd overpowered those two and then decided to huh. stay, you could have stayed. Or if you'd agreed with them to leave, you could have just fucked off. And that would have been, been the end of this mission. You bastard! Damn. <laughs> like legitimately on my on my um detail sheet i actually have rules for um you taking off while zombies are trying to rip chunks out of the ship <laughs> okay fair enough all right lots of engineering and piloting checks <laughs> mm. but like all good players you rushed ahead blindly and didn't think about what you were doing until afterwards <laughs> well you kind of put us down these stairs you automatically did um, yeah, but whether whether we're standing at the bottom of the stairs or whether we're standing at the top of the stairs, we we're still like one block from where we were. Yeah, we were right we on the cusp of that room. True. I must admit, I did slightly in influence you by showing you the next map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly intentionally. Yeah. I know. I noticed that right away. I'm like, all right. I guess he wants us in here for story. Oh reasons. wait, crap! No, there's no doors out of here. Uh, the the end of the corridor at the top is uh, leading onto the base. There's no doors because oh, actually leads directly. Oh, okay, it continues. That line there is yeah. not a dead end. No, that line oh, there is not a dead okay. end. Okay, I'm like, oh crap, we have to deal with this thing. L limited, um, limited uh, mapping space, unfortunately. Okay, is, is why the map's that shape. Um, All right. And so, uh, the thrumming gets louder. Off. And uh, yep, yeah, the thrumming gets louder. And um, the, the radio on that channel becomes a lot less noisy because uh, uh, three, four radio signals leave it. And okay. um, if you look at the right angle, you can probably see a set of um, magnetic thrust engines uh, just, just leaving the moon. Okay. Whee! <laughs> bye bye. Oh, I hate you so much right now, 50. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so sneaky bastard, you got us into this trouble. Are you gonna check the doors? There are no doors. He's oh, the nope, stairway, no the stairway. Like, look through the, the stairway, stairway to see what's coming for us. Uh, the thrumming um, sound's gone. The thrumming sound was the engine, dude. Oh, the thrumming sound was just oh. <laughs> inference, man. Inference. Damn. The th the thrumming sound was the engine. The engine's fucked off now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Engine go bye bye. Uh, all right. So now that I've realized that I kind of may have maybe screwed the pooch on trying to be a good person, you know, 
find out what happened to the crew and get myself rich as shit. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna slowly. I, I'm. Am I still hiding, okay. or do I have to reroll? Uh, you can still be using your hide uh, roll okay. from last time. Okay. So uh, as he's slowly walking that gonna... way. On in yeah. the small truck that I'm sitting at, because I'm assuming it's like a forklift type thing, right? Um, you know the um electric crate lifters in warehouses. Yeah, uh, so a bit, yeah, a little bit like a forklift, but much lower to the ground. They yeah. don't, they're not designed for lifting. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, electric power. Did did a standard worker happen to leave a mug or debris or any sort of personal effects in it? Is there anything that I can pick up? Um, yeah, you look around, there's, um, some sweet wrappers down the side of the seat. Um, there's some sort of random bits and pieces of, um, there's some credit shit on the, on the side. Um, nothing, like, worth anything, really. Um, but, like, did he leave, like, a cup or a mug or, like, maybe there's a bobblehead sitting on the dash or anything stupid like that? What, increase your perception plus one? So Perception out, plus one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, basically, I'm gonna say I found something to further this because I just want to throw something at the back of Sarah Box head. Um, you found something? Yes, there we go. And okay. I'm gonna hurl it at the back of his head, just like a plastic mug. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. So, um, All right, I guess I got to roll for damage. Or no. Nope. Uh, no. <laughs> The, the last toast throw is uh, plus nine, so he gets 18. He actually, surprisingly, with an 18, does manage to wing you on the back of the head with a mug. There we go. <laughs> you jackhole. You got us into this trouble. I'm a little pissed off. I'm gonna rule. I'm gonna rule it that the mug shatters on the back of your space helmet because you're still wearing your helmet. Like uh, it, it yeah. doesn't do any right. damage. You've got a semi-armored spacesuit, but right. out of frustration, I threw a mug at you. <laughs> Fair enough. And also, yeah. by the way, um, one of the things 50, 50 said uh, gave us a great insight into Savrik as a person. Um, he said, uh, Savrik didn't say, but uh, 50 for Ant said that Savrik wanted to do the right thing. So check for survivors, find out what happened, and make himself rich. Um, that, that's a nice little indication of what Savrik's brain is like. Savrik, Savrik is here for himself, mm -hmm. and he has reasoned in his own head, in his own mind, he's reasoned that it's a good thing. He he he's he's doing the right thing by by making himself rich <laughs> for the wrong reasons. For the wrong reasons, but he he's doing yeah. the right thing. Um, so you've got these computer terminals. You've got the the cargo trucks. You've got a couple of um, almost like um, uh, entrance points, almost like uh, border points um, mm -hmm. across the entrance, and then the um, Corridor splits into two. Gray boxes. Uh, those little boxes there are basically flower boxes. They're so like flower boxes and benches, and, and there's there. windows along the side of this area? Windows along the side, yeah. um, and then you've got a solid wall down the center, which um, is, is basically like a bit like a um, semi-divided wall, so it's open okay. at the top half. Um, so you can see across the two sections. Okay, so before anybody gets much further, I'd like to call everybody up on the radio that we still have here, and say, yeah. hey, I, I, I want to do a bit of a science experiment can one of you guys help me and head off back towards the cargo hold um our technician is 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 perfectly happy to go and help you he's he's partially scientific so he he heads back to um to join you the guy who um, already thought me ripping somebody apart with the space tool is the one that i'm gonna have help me throw zombies out in airlock that's awesome he's not gonna yep, be happy yep. he is not gonna no. be happy when he finds out what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like I want to do a science experiment. Grab this body for Damn me. It. I'll take the other one. <laughs> okay. Oh. So yeah, um, Jake, you son of a <laughs> <laughs> So you and uh, uh, Darren head back down, and and um, you revealed him that you're going to throw this body out of the airlock. At which point he gets a rather interesting facial tick. <laughs> but, does he help drag the body? Fair dues, he does indeed help drag the body okay. out of the airlock. So he's got the one with the just kind of flailing shoulder, and I'm pulling the one with <laughs> the um, fully intact arm, because I figure it's a little more dangerous, I'll take that one. We throw them in okay. the airlock, 
And I then, um, yeah, I, I spaced the bastards. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> unfortunately, bad. as um, part of the standard safety procedures with any of these airlocks, uh, you can't open the outer door until it's decompressed. Yeah. Um, so, as it's decompressing, I get to watch the effects on the body, see if they continue to flail or whatnot, and hopefully to so, do some things. Should I roll a spot check to see what I deduce from the bodies? Uh, you can roll a spot check for me. Oh, how about we actually roll the dice? There we go. A 20! Oh, damn, son. Finally! I critically spot what's happening! With a 20 <laughs> so, and a 1. So, um, what you notice is that they do indeed keep twitching and moving. Um, for one of them continues to go for about 30 seconds, the other one continues to go for just over a minute. Um, there's obviously the issues of um, slow heat loss, so mm -hmm. their blood on their uniform starts to freeze. Mm -hmm. um, but the joints themselves don't freeze. You, you, you see that as it winds down, because you're, you're watching so closely, you mm -hmm. can see that as it winds down, it's, it's almost like the way someone would become exhausted. It's like the muscles running out of steam. As okay, so they do um, deoxygenate. Okay, perfect. Yep, so, so you find that um, basically these things are, are oxygen dependent. Um, you, can, you can happily discover that. Okay. Um, Ooh, some good news. Okay. Yeah, that, is, that is, yeah, that is very good news. Okay, and then um, through any of these computer <laughs> terminals, can I find a map to the base? Or can I attempt to find a map to the base? Or are they not uh, connected in that sense? I, I, I will throw you a bit of a bone in that um, I will have um, Samuel, who is an ex-planet explorer. Mm -hmm. um, he he uh, heads back into uh, the um, docking area. And where you had the fight with uh, the first zombie, um, he kind of nudges around in the blood with his boot for a bit. And he comes up with essentially an ID badge, um, which he, he brings back. And by the time you come back from your rather gruesome experiment, he's mm -hmm. already standing at one of the computer terminals, having input the ID badge, and um, he's already going through whatever access he has with that ID badge. Okay. Um, with, it... with your help, okay. the ID badge gives you a basic breakdown that this is a hydroponics and biological matter research facility owned by Obsolife. Um, the basic principle, at least according to this person's ID badge, was to research the effects of certain chemical combinations on um, hydroponics and the subsequent effect on living animals um, that are fed with those hydroponics. Okay. This would explain the big container full of um, chemicals. Um, it would also explain the hydroponic setup that you saw. Mm -hmm. um, and you get um, a basic explanation that the, the station is on a no map uh, security system, meaning that uh, the system is not mapped, uh, the station is not mapped, but the colored lines on the floor, uh, green leads you to the um, living areas, yellow leads you to the scientific research areas, and blue leads you to the airlocks and the command stations. Okay, so what line is heading forward down the hall and what line is heading downwards to the last set of stairs near the first zombie we discovered. That was my so, question immediately. Um, in the airlock, um, the, the, the line, the blue line has um, direction indicators on it pointing you back towards the airlock because mm -hmm. this leads you to the yeah. connection points. And the green and yellow line on the floor have direction indicators leading you up the uh, corridor back into the main base. Okay, but on the previous okay. map... Doo -doo -doo, oh, yeah, right here. This area right there. Um, that area right there um, had a... Um, would have been a blue split-off line heading down there. So it's a secondary lower airlock. Okay. Uh, or it's associated with the airlock. I mean, at a, a rough guess, you could probably <laughs> assume that it's the um, mechanics um, controls for uh, repair and um, pressurization management based upon what most station designs are like. Mm, okay. All right, so seeing as comms are still open, do you, do you want to explore that and I'll come back up? Or how do you want to do this? Well, we've lost four people. 
Okay. Yes. One of them had his leg torn off, and the other one got crushed around the middle. While, like, yep. six people were standing around firing at it. Yeah. Okay? If you take off that way, you with your knife and being able to actually cut muscle systems, versus Darren or Sam that have just stood back shooting the thing ineffectively, I think yeah. I'm going to die going somewhere by myself. So, <laughs> I say back. we all continue together uh, maintenance area... Yeah that we assume is associated to airlock because of the lines pointing to it, I'm not directly concerned with, because I don't think we need to do any overrides. <laughs> um, or actually, no. Right. No, 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 no. Um, how long is the air good for in our suits? Uh, you have uh, 30 minutes of air. You've worked through about 14 of those minutes so far. Um, oh, we however, haven't opened our helmets in the point eight atmosphere. Unless you wanted to. Have you wanted to open your helmets? Uh, I was assuming that we would have had them open since we checked the atmosphere okay, and it was fine. good. Yeah, the atmosphere was good. It's a bit thin, yeah. Yeah. but it's fine. Yeah. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, because that's why I did the cycle check on the airlock first. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, l let's take a vote. Do we... After I share the uh, results of our experiment, do we want to s decompress the station for 10 minutes, 15 minutes? If we've got the airlock controls down there, do we want to attempt to decompress the station for 15 minutes? We don't know if there's any survivors, though. We'll have to. Fuck you, space know. zombies. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, space zombies. <laughs> I, I'd rather let the survivors know somehow. Okay, so we got, we got one vote for survivors. What does Mr. Facial Tick and um, Science Man do? So da Darren's um, Mr. Facial Tick. Darren yeah. is uh, listening in on all this, and he goes, "We're we're, we're rescue. We 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 don't we don't kill people." Um, and so Sam. He, and and Sam Sam's like. Um, uh, he was remember he was the one who said fuck this shit let's leave. Yeah. Uh, Sam's like all all on like let's decompress the fuckers. Um, <laughs> all right. So we now have a two for two disagreement. How do we solve this? Um, the simple way of solving it and the way I solve it in most of my games is what's called the um, no blocks, um, which basically means that uh, the person who is standing closest to their objective is perfectly happy to go and like go after their objective if they want. Yeah, like you've already started walking down the hallway. Me and Sam are still pretty close to the yeah, this I'm place. Gonna go up this way, then. So you're gonna come with us to decompress the fuckers? I'm gonna. Or are you still I'm in the gonna, other no, I'm room? Not going by myself. I'm not going by myself. Oh, it's not nope. going that far forward. Okay. No, nope, I'm so coming back. So, are you going right. to try to stop us then, or what's your goal? Yep. Because uh, it's me and Darren. Darren or C2. I'm not too concerned about Darren. He can't hit shit, and he's like so, or he's uh, now mentally scarred. Okay, um. So, um. Roll a uh, blaster toad. Roll a um, structural check for me again 1d20 plus 8. Oh. oh, good. 1d20 18. plus 8. Damn. Lovely. You, you score quite high. So, okay. Um, your knowledge of the way <laughs> ships work from your experience dismantling them uh, leads you to one very simple uh, sort of resulting um, thought on this, is that unless you can gain access to the emergency door control system, which is usually locked behind um, rather high-level station officers' rankings, mm -hmm. um, then the moment you start to decompress it, then all it's the, going um, to safety doors are going to automatically yep. close to guard the guard the station against being decompressed. Now, if you want to try and hack the system to gain access to the door, then controls, I can ask Sam to help me with that, who has been quite on board with the rest of my plans. Yep, you can ask Sam to help you with that. Sam's got a uh, decent use of computers. And we can also check the now completely incapacitated zombie bodies in the airlock for airlock. another piece of ID, because we only grabbed yes, one of them. Yes, you can. So, so. Uh, first questions first, as I check this door, 
I want to peer through, see if there's anything I can see through the small windows on it, and also check if it is currently accessible. It is accessible, and it has a stairwell behind the door. That's it. It's a stairwell. Think uh, a metal version of a concrete stairwell. Okay. Um, Sam and myself, how good would our nonverbal communication be? N not brilliant. Not you brilliant. Haven't practiced, you haven't practiced nonverbal communication. Well, we we've both been of the same mindset so far. Um. Yep. Damn it! I didn't look at fifty stat sheet. Uh, I guess I just have um, to do this unknowingly because I wouldn't actually know this. Um, I'm gonna perform a grapple on Saravok and attempt okay. to tie him up with my wire. All right. Okay. Roll a grapple check. So oh, bitch, I was gonna... While looking knowingly at Sam, hoping that he does something to intimidate Darren. So I got a thirteen. And what would be my grapple then? Is on the top. Uh, grapple is plus eleven. I got a plus eleven dash plus six. So what's that mean for? Uh, so that basically means you can grapple twice in a round. Oh, okay. Um, if you use a full round action to grapple. Um, so you've got a, quite a high grapple there. You've got a 24. Uh, <clears throat> there, is, there is a chance that 50 foot will break it because 50 foot has a plus eight. He has to score um, above uh, 16 to break your grapple. Um, yep. You forget. Six. Son of a bitch. Almost. Right. Yes. Um, so you manage to grab hold of um, 50 foot, and you need to do a, another grapple check to pin 50 foot, which is to basically restrain him. And one. 14. Sh shit. And right. I guess my six for my second grapple. Yep, so you do indeed manage to um, grab 50 foot, bear him to the ground, and, um, pin. and, and pin him down. Um, at least for now. Okay. Um, uh, what do I have to do to tie him with my wire? Uh, that would be sort of another grapple check in the next round. Okay. Um, so it now comes round to because it was a surprise attack. Like um, Savrik comes next. Um, so Savrik can attempt to break your grapple with his own grapple check. Uh, grapples mm -hmm. become remarkably complicated in this game, unfortunately. Uh, one. <laughs> he doesn't. Uh, I'm not even. I'm not even going to make you roll. Like, the, the one time, the one time Toad actually succeeds at anything, he's attacking someone. Oh my god. Head. You son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, loving shit. this. This is great. This is awesome. That's amazing. I can't believe it. Uh, all right. Well, um. What so, to me? Uh, oh, what do Sam and Darren do? Because, like, I, I looked at. Sam, trying to be like eye contact, like do something. I'm gonna make a move, but did he read anything <laughs> into that or no? So, or are those guys just sitting there stunned? But bo both of them are just standing there, staring at you like what? The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait. It's like what? 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 <laughs> so, okay. uh, Blast Blaster Toad has pinned down Savrick and tied him up with a metal wire. All right, shit. Um, so um, Samuel's going to like this is the point where it would be useful to have like four or five party uh, player characters because at this point as a DM I just sit back and laugh my ass off as you lot argued. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but unfortunately I am two of the player characters. Mm -hmm. So um, da Darren's going to draw his holdout pistol uh, and just kind of look at you like, and over the radio comes the the cracking voice of Darren's like, "What well, what the fuck do you think you're doing?" Um, so I guess I'm over Sam here now because I just yep. tackled, grappled, and tied him. Yeah, Samuel's just just standing there, staring, just standing there, open mouth, just like, uh, what? Yeah. yeah. All right. And yeah. me here, Jake Long. It's like so. While I'm, it, it's just for a moment. As soon as we decompress this place, he's untied. All right. So, like, just I can't do anything while I'm tied, can I? Or can I, uh, can I try you to... could talk, you could yell, you could tell Darren I, to I take have, a shot. I want to roll. I'm gonna roll to intimidate you. 
Roll so to intimidate stand me? Stand down. Are you gonna stand your ass down? You have, there's no reason for this bullshit. The the other thing you can do is um, you could roll escape because basically um, he's tied you up, and when he tied you up, he managed to uh, roll a um, sixteen plus six, so he managed to roll a uh, twenty four. Um, you would Thank get you. it would only be a plus two, but if you were to critically succeed your um, escape artist check, you could wiggle your way out of the wire. <laughs> You'd have to yeah, roll a 20. Yeah, but... uh, I'm going to roll to intimidate instead. Okay. Okay, so I have to do a will save then? Uh, roll to intimidate. Son of a bitch. Roll. Uh... 20! <laughs> well, and I hate you so much. <laughs> God okay, it. so now we know how Blaster Tony is going to play games from now on. <laughs> Son of a PvP bitch. the whole way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Samuel is on board with decompressing the decompressing mm. the base. He's a little bit confused because, like, decompressing the base is all well and good, but you guys have thirty minutes worth of oxygen in your suits. Well, we only going... we only had to decompress for two minutes. The other guy to make him yeah, unmovable. So if yeah, we can but... get him to hack the doors, which I'll let him in on in a bit. Hmm. then um, we only need to decompress it for 15 minutes and we're good. Uh, Samuel's reasonably intelligent, so he's kind of guessed what your plan is, having, having uh, heard the thing stop twitching. He's kind of guessed what your plan is. Um, his, his response to your plan, however, is... Um, yeah, what if the oxygen uh, cycling system isn't working? Well, we don't have a ship anyway. What else do you want to try? Deal with uh, these he, he... fuckers or deal, not deal with these fuckers and try to survive? His response, like he, he he goes, well, like this station's massive, so there's like probably a good week or two's worth of oxygen on the station on on it by itself. Um, mm -hmm. Like with with us, even in this room, we could probably survive for a week with the amount of oxygen in the room. Um, if we decompress, we've got thirty minutes to find out how to get this place back up and oxygen flowing again. Um, so far, we've seen like two of those things. We haven't seen anything else, like. The, 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 this seems like a low percentage thing to me because like it would take us more than 30 minutes to, to cross this base to the other side if the oxygen generation system's on the other side and you need to manually restart it if we decompress this place we're, we're dead okay well I'm assuming in a base this size as you pointed out then then there's going to be multiple airlocks if you can there get control of, yeah, if you can get control of the doors we can keep the cargo bay and that next corridor compressed, as well as the maintenance room I'm hoping we find downstairs there. And then we'll have thin atmosphere, but hey, we'll have atmosphere. And let's just space okay. the rest of the place. Like, we so, know the so area we've searched is fine. Let's keep that and space the rest. Okay, if so we can do agreement it. to go down and look at the engineering department uh, below the... the uh... So am I still tied up upstairs, or have you guys... I just left you tied up up there, because I only want to have to deal with one person if something goes sideways. The, the radio is still turned on, so you yeah. can hear what's going on. All right, so well. Sa Savric, Savric goes down, and um, he... he Blaster Toad uh, comes tried... down, Jake comes down, or is Savric trying to do a... Um... Jake comes down, and... Sorry, yeah. Jake comes down, and Samuel comes down. But, and, uh, um... I will... Can I stumble to my feet? Can I get my, can I get my yep. ass you, up? You, yeah, you okay. can pull yourself up onto your feet. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I will do so and roll to escape. Okay. Oh, if I can roll. Oh, my God. Remember, he needs a critical or at least a 19. Oh! So you got a 17. Um, you've done enough to loosen the wires. Um, if you wait uh, 60 seconds and then do again, then the, it will have dropped down from 26 to um, 22. So you'll be able to do it on an 18 plus. And you can do this again and again and again. We can, we, can, we can go through, as these guys are busy, we can go through you slowly working yourself free of the okay. wires. Um, Samuel comes down, he interfaces with the computer system below the docking port using the two ID cards that you've got. Um, he managed to roll a five on his computer use check. Oh, so, awesome. Uh, <laughs> basically, um, he hasn't been able to break any of the security uh, protocols in place. Um, using the two ID cards, he has access to uh, what are called grade one doors on the station. And grade one doors would be any door that is not classified as air safety. Um, <laughs> 
So he can't open airlocks um, without actually being physically there to open it. Um, he can tweak the venting system. Roll the one. You've just managed to make the ropes tighter again. Um, <laughs> Critical failure! <laughs> so you now need a 19 plus instead of an 18 plus. Um, so basically he can um, have some minor control over the vents, but he can't intentionally release the oxygen. Um, you could open the airlock and then he could open the non-airlock doors, which would allow you to decompress the airlock the airlock storage bay, the corridor, and the corridor beyond that one. Uh, but that would be it. That would be as far as he would be able to do. Okay. Uh, with my electronic crafting skill, what is the chance of me being able to make something to override the other doors? If you were in the central computer bay, then you could probably start ripping out circuits. But these are all just interfaces with the computer's yeah. central computer bay. You can't actually influence the core circuitry. Or the and uh, electronic crafting isn't writing coding. It's it's crafting. It's messing with circuits. Um, if you could get hold of the mother circuits, then you could mess with them, and you could probably basically bypass the software that's running the security system. Uh, but you don't have access to the circuitry from here. Okay. Yeah, that roll took forever, and I got nothing out of it. Holy shit. Hmm. So we're down here. We've got access to all the non-airlock doors, pretty m or all the like main corridor doors. Yep. Okay. Uh, is there any way where I could make a? Could I make a radio? Like, since we've got in this interface room and we can see all the computers and how things are checking out and that, could I make a radio so we can remotely interface the doors through the suit? Yes, you could link your you could link your suit to uh, this control system, um, and you could use your your suit's link to this control system. You would have to basically cannibalize the radio from um, <clears throat> one of the other spacesuits. Well, is we, we got two dead guys upstairs, so yep, and boxes um, of components. Could, so yeah, you could link the radio system into uh, this computer system and and have access to it from elsewhere. Can I make two of those units? Or yes. yes? Okay, I yes. give myself one and one to Sam. Roll craft electronics. Twenty? Yep. Oh come on, come on, don't be gay, don't be nineteen! Nice. And craft okay. electronics so plus three. It yes. takes you about five minutes and you uh, you achieve what you want. Yes, um, you I got two connections. Two connections. Perfect. In those five minutes, um, uh, Savrak has managed to wiggle himself mostly free. He is not free, unfortunately. Let's have one last roll. 15 plus Savrak. Oh, son of a bitch. 12. 12! With plus 3 from his dexterity. So, yes, he manages just just as My you're God. finished here and you're heading back upstairs, <laughs> you manage, yeah, he manages so to wiggle out. So basically, we meet him at the stairwell and I'm like, dude, I was just coming up to untie you. <laughs> Can I have my rope back? <laughs> I was just, I was tired of being tied up. Screw you, you dick nuts. Well, do you give me my rope back or no? No, I'm hanging on to that for now. I ain't trust you with that shit again. You'll do that shit again. No. Crap, my <laughs> rope. I like that rope. It's a special rope. I bet you like rope. Blasted dicks, you faggot. I'm <laughs> still salty about that. I'm still salty <laughs> shit. <laughs> that's great. That's That's great. <laughs> You son of a bitch. <laughs> well, I'm going to go grab a quick glass of water. I'll be right back, guys. But, okay, so we're back up okay, in this okay. corridor. Okay, we've got remote interface. Because this is great now, because now we can try to shoot out windows and then run back and close the door on that area. That's my plan now. If it's if we see anything, just shoot out all the windows in the place and then duck back behind the door. <laughs> just let the suckers starve. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. that, that was some harsh I mean, PvP. That was just brutal. The it's like ones. sneak, sneak attack, and he's getting twenties, and you're getting ones. It's like, like <laughs> that could not have gone worse. It could not have gone any worse. The great thing is, the great thing is, versus an NPC enemy versus an an an, uh, an evil monster. 
two, three, one, four, six against another player. 20, yeah. 18, 17, 19. I like, know. Like, seriously. What the shit? <laughs> that was just amazing. That was that was amazing. See, What's this now? One of the great things. Uh, we're just laughing at the fact that against an evil monster, two, four, <laughs> one, three. But against me, I'm trying foot. to be good and save people, and you're just like, nope, wrecked, son. Twenty, twenty, eighteen, <laughs> twenty. <laughs> Pretty much molested me. Oh, I mean, no. he even tied me up and everything. <laughs> Oh, and I didn't even give you a safe word. Oh, <laughs> damn it! Next right. time I have to tell you up, so, I'm gonna whisper in your character's ear the safe words "banana" and then walk away. I'm so glad you said character's ear and not your ear. <laughs> Next time I tell you, I'm gonna whisper in your ear. <laughs> like, oh, no, no, stop. <laughs> oh, oh <Dude>. god. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I am loving this. This is my groove. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Except oh, for the god. dice rolling. The dice rolling part kind of sucks. <clears throat> okay. So we're See, back in this. Thing about, like, the dice rolling kind of sucks, but at the same time, it's one of these things where, unless you have the dice rolling... How do you determine whether you were successful or not? Do you I know, say I, you were successful? I'm just saying the dice rolling sucks because I get in roll, low rolls. Like, it, it's it's a good ah, system. I like it. It's just my dice rolling skills suck. Or the random chance sucks. Either or. Mm. Random right. chance is always a bit of a bitch. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, Start I'm going to um, continue moving. Yeah. Okay. So, so see how we look uh, this area. Since I'm standing right here, what is the um, structural... How structural are these turnstile-type gated things? Uh, they're essentially fold-flat pieces of metal that become a desk and have a computer on them. Okay. Um, they're designed to fold flat so that you can uh, drive the cargo truck straight up and through. Oh, so I don't have to necessary. run over them. Okay. Nope. They're, they're literally just little desks that people would stop at on the way in. Okay, then I want to go back and grab one of the trucks with a container. Okay. Um, do a... What would be the best thing for you to roll here? Um, let's have a craft mechanical, so plus six. Fifteen. Plus six? Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Or no, that's... fourteen plus six, so twenty. Twenty. Okay, so that's more than enough for you to jury-rig the controls and get the thing running. <laughs> um, you then have to do a... Um, I would say drive, but let's have a pilot check from you. <laughs> Do I critically fail and run it into the wall? I, I hope so. Seven no. with pilot That's of four. four. Eleven. Mm. So you can just about manage to get the thing sort of running and under control. You're a little bit shaky with how the thing sort of mm -hmm. putters along. Um, you probably scrape the paint off the wall a couple of times as you go. But you can putter the cargo container, cargo con uh, containing device off up the corridor if you wish. Okay, sweet. Um, how how loud is it? Is my question. Um, it's got the standard mechanical whine of an electric uh, cargo carrying. Uh, so it's nothing major. Truck. It's just like a. Yep. Bad, it's just, just a, okay. a, a okay. high a, a high pitched uh, whir of the mechanical motors. Okay, so it almost the... blends into the sounds of nothing. Yep. Um, okay. Samuel and Darren are just going to hop on the tines at the back because you know. All right. Free ride. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll to hide. <laughs> I assume you're gonna. I assume you're gonna go up this way, and I'm gonna go up this way. Nineteen. He is shadow. <laughs> nice. He, and not he is all shadow. Post data. What? He's trying to load up a picture of a pallet truck. I'm presuming. Yep. That's actually pretty accurate, apart from it has arms. This thing wouldn't mm -hmm. have arms. But essentially, yeah, you just have a little electric yeah. pallet truck. So Perfect. We're just driving up this corridor. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, we're okay. doing a thing. Yeah. So, um, since so far, we've seen nothing. Yeah. Counterparts and jack shit. Yeah. All nice and quiet, all silent. Um, at the moment, you haven't sort of like um, met anything particularly uh, terrifying. 
Oh, are you getting rid of my pallet truck? No, no, your pallet truck's coming. Oh, it's in way. the hallway. Okay. So this this is the entrance from the from the uh, corridor from the um, overpass that goes between the landing dock and the main base. Bear in mind, it's considered standard practice to have the landing dock quite a distance away from the main base to prevent crashes and things. So mm -hmm. that's why there's the big long corridor. Um, mm -hmm. And then you come into the main base, and the main base consists of a wall in front of you and a corridor stretching off to the left and right, uh, wide enough for the pallet truck to drive down. Um, you presume that the corridor stretching off to the left and right continue off to storage bays and mm -hmm. cargo bays because the doors facing you seem a little bit small for the pallet truck. You could probably force the pallet truck through if you really wanted to. I'm going to head over to the left right, uh, because arbitrary I... movement... We've I'd got say, no I'd idea where we are. I think we're closer to yet. And I'm going to try to take the truck through the door. Okay. Do I have so, to do a pilot um, check for that? Uh, no. Uh, there's lots of banging and scraping, but it's you're not under any stress. Basically, you can do what's called taking 10, which you assume the roll is 10. Okay. Um, it just takes longer. Um, so, for instance, if something would take six seconds to do quickly, mm -hmm. um, if you take 10, it takes a minute to do instead, uh, okay. but you manage to do it anyway. So you just you just bang your way through the door, essentially. <laughs> and you are confronted with this. <laughs> I just drove a, a truck bay, into so. the med bay. <laughs> yep. yeah. Oh, this is awesome. This is I great. Mean... Uh... Okay. <laughs> and uh, in the background of that picture, you could see the, the medical office uh, that mm -hmm. yeah. sits in the center with glass windows. Um, it's a med bay. It's very busy. It seems shockingly busy for a station of this size in that like there's four beds, there's there's um, lots of surgery equipment, and, and um, there's even a, a very rare thing called an auto dock, which is a assistive surgery device, mm. um, which is a bit odd, but um, fair enough. It's, it's obviously a well-stocked medical station. Um, and leading out, there is the door you came in through. Uh, there is a door to the behind the office. Uh, there's a door to the top right, and there's an um, airlock door. It's actually an airlock door uh, leading directly across the room from you, hidden just behind the corner of the office. Okay. All so right, I um, want to... Um, I'll head up this what was, way. What are these things? Uh, those are medical stations, med, bays, bas uh, med beds, basically. Okay, so did I just run over a med bed? Uh, you basically crashed into the corner of one. Okay. <laughs> So I'm right, going to um, search these areas, so I want to do a spot then to see what I come up with. I took damage. I want to check if the med bay works so I can actually heal myself back Oh, god there. damn it. Using your treat injury, um, you could okay. use it as per a surgical facility. Um, okay. if, you took t if you took 10 minutes, uh, you could use it as per a surgical facility. You could use it as per a med um, packet. I may have to close my window because someone's mowing outside. Mm. So yeah, I just rolled okay. a three and got a plus one for spot, so... I see a med bay! So there's to heal myself back up, and that's it. Take ten. Okay. Okay, so if he's taking time, uh, can I do a prolonged search without the spot check, or do I still have to do a spot check? I think he... Oh, he took off for a second to do his yeah. window. Yeah, so I did my take ten. Okay. Is he oh. back? Hey, he's back. back. So yeah, I rolled a four on my spot check, so I saw a med bay. Yeah, you saw yeah. med bay. Um, med can I, since and he's doing I, the the take ten, take 10 heal himself? Heal myself back can back. I do a prolonged search to look through stuff without the um, spot, or do I still have to run a spot for the prolonged search? Uh, you can do a take 10 on the, sur uh, on the search, um, however, I would like both of you to roll a listen for me, which is d20 plus the listen skill. Which is wisdom, by the way. I got a 20! <laughs> All right. Natural 20! Natural 20! I critically listen! I got 18. So nine. With a wisdom, so plus zero? Nine. Yep. So, um, both of you score high enough to hear... Um, Basically, it, it, it sounds almost like someone knocks something over inside the office, but it's got glass windows, you can't see anything. Um, so you almost, hear, you almost hear like someone knock, knock something over in the office. Um, and uh, in the meantime, um, you have a choice. Um, 
uh, 50 foot. You have a choice. Uh, you can treat yep. the medical bay as a medical <laughs> kit, or you can treat it as a surgery kit. Because you're taking 10, treating it as a medical kit would be five minutes. Treating it as a surgery kit would take an hour. If you treat uh, it as a medical kit, you get 1d4 plus 2 for your field medic skill. So you get 1d4 plus 2. If you treat it as a surgery okay. kit, you'd get 1d8 plus 2. Um, yeah, let's do the 1d4 plus 2. That's fine. Are you sure? Because I'm doing like a prolonged search here. So if you want to take an hour to heal okay, yourself then, up, you take can, an hour. Yeah, I will. I will do that. Okay. Four. So you get six healed, okay. which isn't bad actually, considering right. how much damage you took. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So with our remote door setup that we do, can we do a lock on that door uh, uh, with temporarily? The door setup, uh, <laughs> you could bypass basically using the system that Samuel and you set up. You could essentially bypass the opening commands on that door. Okay, so I lock uh, that door while we're doing the search here. Thank okay. you for that. I was going to say. So. Um, Savrick jumps up on the autodoc table and engages the autodoc and, and starts working with, with working with the autodoc to uh, fix the damage to his ankle. And I'm uh, searching this involves, things. Yep. This involves rather a brutal procedure where, because his ankle has had breaks in the bone and he needs it healed rather quickly, he uh, uses something called uh, skeletal cement, uh, which is injected by a large bore needle into the site where you've got the cracked bone and basically cements the bone back together. It's exceedingly painful and unpleasant, but does fix the cracks in his bone. And combined with some rapid healing gels and uh, some stitches, uh, he manages to heal himself up reasonably well. In the meantime, okay. um, Blasto does a, a search around. He finds medical kits. Uh, he finds a whole, uh, literally a whole uh, bank um, on the wall of mobile med kits, the, very, very similar to the one that Savrick's carrying, which is your standard um, treatment kit for uh, skilled medics okay. going around what space kind of, um What kind of weight are those? Um, they weigh probably about um, 12 pound each, I think, if I remember correctly. Okay, um, that's still well within my weight. I'm gonna take two of those medic kits. Just because okay. I assume so, so you... the things inside of them are consumable, so it's not a complete, it's not a reusable item, right? Yes, that's correct. So you're you're going to um, throw two of those into your backpack um, mm -hmm. to to make sure you have spare med kits with you. Yeah. Um, you don't have a massive amount of skill in treating injury, but so... but I can carry them around and have somebody use I them. Have, yeah. I have yes. high skill. Oh so yeah. All right. So, so I assume um, I'm done being all healed up. You're done being all healed up. Um, it's taken about right. 10, 10 minutes worth of auto-doc time. Uh, it was rather brutal yeah. and quick, but um, surprisingly, the auto-doc sped it up quite a lot. All right, now I'm mobile again. I want to, since we only heard something get knocked over in this room, I'm going to roll to hide and mm -hmm. get see if Jaden can open the door for me here so I can take a peek in. Because everybody else is kind of hidden. Uh, it's got glass windows. Like I'll I'll show you the picture of the med bay. Yeah, um, like it, it's got big glass oh, windows. Said, oh, I thought you said you can't see in. See, so you've got big like. Oh shit! Yeah, got a big open glass window all the way along, so you. So can I see, see I just through it. roll a spot check because you're fairly perceptive, right? To see what you see inside yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Where is my? Yep, I may be handicapped. That's my issue there. So you've got a pretty decent spot. You managed to get a total of 23. So you look in Beauty. and you see what would be uh, essentially a chief chief medical officer's um, center. It's got some locked cabinets on the walls, which contain the stuff that's much more restricted than having out in the general med bay. Um, it's got a desk, chair, computer, um, and there's a, a collection of um, medical items strewn across the floor that um, uh, have come from an open med kit, med kit that was obviously sitting on the desk previously. Um, actually, I'm going to roll for this because I want to see whether she's any good at this. Oh, God, no. She's fucking terrible. <laughs> uh, so out from underneath okay. the, the, the desk is sitting a foot. Um, uh, you can see a foot sticking out from underneath the desk. 
All right, okay, but um, if she's any good at this, that I'm taking that to imply that we got somebody hiding in there, and it's not just a zombie we're dealing with. Yeah, yeah it might a be a female person. zombie. Yeah, I'd be perfectly happy to say she if it was a female zombie. Yeah, but trying and, to do uh, something, see if I, I guess it could just be a is she hidden check on a dead zombie. Yeah, huh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I'm gonna. Get, you want to open it for me so I can I can go in by myself and. No, have, you get out, I'm going to request out. our two other members join us near the door with pistols drawn, and I will also yeah, yeah, draw my the door. my holdout pistol, you know, just in case. Yeah, yes, those are shockingly well, effective. My... Uh, I know, but I'll I'll try to do a critical hit to a shoulder or some All stupid right, shit I'm like gonna... that and roll a three, and then I'll open the door for you. Or I will issue an unlock command so that you can open the door when ready. Do that. Uh, okay. Let's see, I'm trying to think what do I want to. Hmm. All right, so I'm gonna equip the rope, and That's all right, my I'm rope. gonna open it and charge. Yeah, I'm gonna charge at it. And okay. Pull it out from under the desk. Oh my God! Roll, please. There you go. A twenty. Oh. <laughs> So you do a charging grapple, you manage to grab hold of the foot and pull, at which point the other foot that is attached to that foot starts kicking you in the face. Um, <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> roll, goddamn yeah. you. And it manages to kick you in the face twice. Because <laughs> yeah. it got eight, it got 18 and 17 and your defense is 18. Wow, oh that's brilliant. 2d4, okay. give me my 2d4. Shit. You take five non-lethal damage. <laughs> okay. So, um, I would record that separately to your, your hit points, because okay. non-lethal damage works a little bit differently. Um, right, right, right. The truck still so basically, basically non-lethal damage is, is um, damage which wouldn't kill you, <laughs> but could render you unconscious. Um, okay. Yeah. And it's it's dealt with separately to um, <clears throat> to normal damage. Um, so the person attached to the foot that's kicking you in the face um, is a screaming uh, female with uh, long blonde hair. Um, All right, she, I'm she's jump wearing. My ass back. <laughs> You're going to let go and no, jump I'm back. Jump my ass back right away. Just instant jump back. Now that I realize it's not a bed. What the fuck? <laughs> That, that's She's just... wearing um, a, a pair of uh, grey trousers and a um, sort of white overshirt, um, over jacket style thing. Um, she has uh, no particular weapons on her. Uh, she has a pair of standard boots. She's not wearing a spacesuit. Um, and she's basically screaming and grabbing up random medical supplies from the floor and throwing them at you through the door. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, at least I got a 20 on my grapple. <laughs> yeah, you got a beautiful grapple. I mean, you got that boot, and you just, like, clung to it. You were like Mr. Limpet Man on the boot. Like, <laughs> my boot! <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so... Um, I'm a... If I close the doors again, can she hear us through the glass and the doors? Probably not. Can, can I partially oh, close the doors with my command, or is it just a binary on-off? It's open or closed. There's there's no partials. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll I'll roll to intimidate. Really? <laughs> You've got a really? screaming woman. That you're going to go for it. Yep. Go for it. Go for it. You go jackhole. For it. Oh, you got a ten. That's not a bad roll. Plus That's nine. Not a bad roll. So I got nineteen. Okay. So um. Basically, um, she's going to stop screaming and throwing things, primarily because, you know, she's on the brink of passing out from hyperventilating. Um, you, you have essentially petrified her into silence. <laughs> I mean, at least she's not throwing shit. Okay, so I'm going to walk so... up, put my hand on this woman's shoulder, try to console her, and ask to the effect of what's going on. So let's do a... Do, 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 do. I got a two plus zero <laughs> charisma. 
I should have attacked her, PvP'd, and I would have rolled like a 27. I don't know how that's possible, but I would have done it. <laughs> oh my so god. god. Essentially, this, this role rather fits in because you have a woman who is so petrified she can no longer make any noise, and you've just strolled up to her and put your hand on her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see perhaps where you may be going wrong in your diplomatic efforts, Mr. Toad? <laughs> um... <laughs> All right. Oh, damn it. She, she attempts to kick you in the face, but fails, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. All right. I... All right. So I'm going to roll... I'm going to roll this poem. I'm going I'm to try to explain to her now that... Shit's gone sideways, and we want to know what's going on. We're here as a rescue. I'm pretty sure with... because she's standing in there, she knows shit's gone sideways. No, but I mean that for us as well. Explain the situation in full, including who we're from and what yeah. we're there for. Sorry, but we killed two of your colleagues back there and then spaced them out in airlock. Both of them were mutilated with the cutting tool. So, <laughs> with diplomacy, it's I get sixteen. You get 16 with your diplomacy. Yeah. Um, so basically, to let you into a little bit of the background, um, she started off as um, something called unfavorable, which basically means that she doesn't like you and doesn't want anything to do with you. Uh, yeah. You then intimidated her <laughs> successfully uh, into being... Um, it, it, it's uh, a kind of thing um, which is basically um, unfavorable, but... Um, we'll listen. Uh, kind of like a, a false favorableness in that um, she, she's kind of being forced to cooperate with you. Okay. So it's an unfavorable but cooperative. Um, you've now managed to diplomacy up her, her up to um, just uh, flat kind of uh, neutral to you in that uh, okay. she, she doesn't really know what to make. Now, from what you said when you rolled your diplomacy, basically my in my head I have this vision of... Um, Savrick walking up to her and going, yeah, we're, um, we're long-range salvage and rescue. We're here to rescue you. Our colleagues flew off in our ship, so we're kind of fucking stuck. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's about it. <laughs> so she, this, this, this shit is kind of like throwing her brain through a loop. We're so, here to uh, rescue you, but we don't that. have any means to rescue you. Yeah. Pretty much. That, 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 uh. That's the situation you've left yourselves in. Um, yeah, and and uh, now she, now she's just kind of like looking at you two and the two people behind her behind you with like this kind of look of what 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 and she she looks up at you and she goes um um I'm Ariana um uh, um uh, what, what do you mean your colleagues flew off? <laughs> uh, they took the ship and buggered off. Yeah, just they, that Ariana. They... We no longer have a vessel here. <laughs> the ship's gone. It's just so gone. You're... So you're trapped here too. Ah, good to know we're all in the same boat. <laughs> or station, I guess, because our space boat flew off. At which point she just kind of sighs, puts her head on her knees, and just goes, we're all fucking dead. Well, since you feel that way, would you mind if I borrowed your, uh, you know, pass card? Uh, she she rips the pass card <laughs> off her chest and flicks it at you. Perfect, um, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so 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 essentially, you've you've essentially mugged this poor woman. <laughs> you've essentially mugged this poor survivor. You are horrible. I wanna, okay, I walk over to Sam, give him the pass card, and see if it's any higher level. See if we can get access to the airlocks with it. All right. While uh, he's doing that, I'm gonna ask if she knows what the hell happened here. So I guess I gotta roll. Yep, uh, feel free to roll diplomacy again. Okay, you get a 15. That's, that's not terrible for diplomacy. Um, she's neutral to you, so she doesn't mind sharing this kind of information, because this kind of information is classified as kind of like... It's the kind of stuff people Need would share. No. Um, it's the kind yeah. of stuff people would share. Um, basically, um, she was a scientist uh, working for... Uh, in, uh, working for... What was it called? Obzalife. <laughs> I completely forgot the name for a second. Uh, called, working for Obzalife, and she was working in um, biological management systems. So basically her job was to uh, le learn about the effects of different chemicals on hydroponics, uh, both airborne and waterborne um, chemicals affecting hydroponics, and the effects they had on stations, 
Now, as far as she's aware, this was actually part of Obs of Life's plan to perhaps weaponize this technology. Hmm. Um, with the idea of small canisters of airborne chemicals being introduced into um, hydroponic bays. Um, she thinks perhaps one of the airborne chemicals they were testing may have caused people to go crazy because people have been killing each other. Um, that, that's, that's what she thinks. She thinks this might be to do with the hydroponics experimentation. Yeah, and I just yell over from where I'm standing beside Sam trying to figure stuff out. He's like, yeah, they aren't just crazy. <laughs> 50 foot ant plants versus zombies. <laughs> I mean, it's the first thing that comes to mind. It's, it's I'm, I'm thinking that something to do with the, because it, it's airborne from what it sounds like is what they're working on. I'm thinking all or some shit that they, no, no, they, they, they said it's airborne to affect the crops and then the crops have been being mean. eaten by the crew and based in the water system and based yeah, in the water think, yeah but, so it's like so it's all like in pretty much everything that you'd eat all the yeah that's what i was going don't for, yes. eat anything okay uh, at this point sort of like listening to you two converse ariana's gone like we, we don't eat the, the test crops like, how stupid do you think we are? We're, we're introducing, like, base metals and things into food. Well, why, I, I, why? I come stand by the door, it's like, well, we got assaulted by two corpses, and have someone think that, oh no, crazy people might be loose on the station. I think you're pretty frickin' stupid. <laughs> well, Damn. Um, well, she's now no longer neutral with you. I'll say that. She's now no longer neutral with you. At least not with blast. Yeah, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna. Oh my god, damn it, Jaden. What? I'm gonna roll. I, I, I'm a rough and tumble make... salvage guy who's trying to get money to build my own or to yeah. buy my own ship. Yeah. You got me stuck on this damn this place. I already threw a thermos at your face. Like, I'm not happy with yeah, this situation. Yeah, it's all messed up. <laughs> Let oh, me, uh, come back. Okay, are we all back? Oh, no. Are we all back? Hello? Yay, technical difficulties. Not oh, there we go, I can hear a droid. Kind of, for a second there. Holy crap, you sound like GLaDOS. <laughs> oh, and now yeah, you're normal so again. Okay. There you go. All right. Now we're good. There we so go. I'm gonna roll diplomacy to try and get her to be more favorable and share more information about if there's any. Is there an armory on the ship? Is there anything that will be useful? Oh my god! <laughs> Damn it! I can't roll. There you go. You got a thirteen. Okay. Do I find anything out? Did we lose a droid? Yep. Wow, Discord is ass today. Mm-hmm. Hello? Hello. Oh, okay, you're back. There we go. Um, right. For some reason, it was saying I was connected, but wouldn't let me talk. Um, I, I heard what you said. Um, you're trying to get information out of her with a diplomacy check. Basically, um, she backs off around her desk. She's kind of done with the Two Stooges Act at the moment. Um, she's getting a little bit fed up of this shit. Um, she, she may also, like, from uh, the situation, um, if you take a close look around the room that she's in, you notice that there's a couple of open edits. Um, Seriously? Yeah, we're getting some... Discord is just taking a crap today. Yeah, Discord's yep. having serious issues. There you go. Okay, okay so switch back gonna... to Steam momentarily. Uh...
Okay. Hello. There we go. Yeah, I can hear a droid, and then we got 50. 50's connecting yeah. in here. There we go. Okay. So she's done with this and walked behind her desk. Yeah. Yep. Um, basically, so you can I get see... nothing. Uh, you, you you can see if you look around the room, there's some open med kits. Um, a, a little bit of thinking about it, like because you can see there's a set of open med kits. There's there's mess on the floor. She's probably been here for a while. Mm. Um, like the med kits contain in them stuff that is technically edible. Oh, okay. Um, okay. She's been you, eating you, med you... kits. Awesome. Uh, yeah, she's probably been eating the like stasis gel and things in, in the med kits. Um, delicious, tasty, mm -hmm. tasty. Um, so she's probably kind of like a little bit unhinged if she's been here for a while. Um, but you managed to get enough information out of her, and and with, with your um, diplomatic charms of attempting to intimidate the poor frightened woman uh, <laughs> when you first opened the door. I, have I, should have, I should have had her try and stab you with a scalpel. Oh, that would have been beautiful. Um, but she did get two kicks in the face. The... <laughs> he did. He did get kicked in the face. Uh, you managed to figure out that there is, um, or was at least, a security contingent on the station. That yes, there is an armory and a, a, like a security bay um, within the station. All right. So there is some other Where? bits and pieces going on. <laughs> Yeah, we, we know it's Where it, it exists. <laughs> awesome. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so with the okay. um, ID card that I provided <laughs> with Sam, has been, he been able to do anything with it yet or determine if we have any higher access to anything? Uh, you have access to all the hydroponic systems. Awesome. Okay. So Ooh, uh, down. Sam, Sam at this point, Sam at this point um, kind of pipes up with we kind of have to figure out what we want to do guys like they've got to have some kind of transmission system like maybe we can like take the station from being dark maybe we can call for help or like i don't know maybe they've got a shuttle or something all right does she i, mm -hmm. I want to know if she knows where the where the command station is where the main where everything is the main control center okay that's fine um Roll us a diplomacy check for that. Let's let's see if she's feeling cooperative. And we got a 19. Holy crap. Plus 6. 25 in total. Okay. She's very cooperative. So, um, she says that the, the main computer complex, the main computer command complex, is across from the armory uh, near the... Uh, uh, near the... Uh, uh, buggy bay near the uh, transport bay um, and that the command center uh, is down the corridor from there okay okay being a research facility with hydroponics doing experiments on um, on plant life that's potentially harmful or dangerous is there a um, contingency protocol for flaming the place out? Uh, her, her response is like potentially dangerous with feeding like heavy metal plants. Heavy metal plants. Mm -hmm. yeah! um, <laughs> we're feeding heavy metal plants to rats and dogs. Like the contingency plan is a shotgun. Oh, so we don't have like a. Okay. Laboratory napalm it button. They didn't think ahead about the cross contamination or cross species infection. God damn it. With retards. what? It's, she says, with what? We're not dealing with microbial infections. We're dealing with elements and, and chemical, compo chemical combinations. Exactly. Elements and chemical combinations could have some sort of reaction in certain plant life and create okay. something that becomes. You know. Have we noticed any sort of monitoring system? In what sense? In, like, are there cameras in this place? Yes. Um, as said, when you landed on the docking bay, like, the, the right. actual yes. kind of landing corridor had cameras, had screens with um, displays of the docking area. 
Okay. So there are actually cameras about. Um. Perfect. So she's over her desk, anyone? right? Yep. Have okay, I so I come sit behind her desk, lean over her, attempt to access her computer, and bring back our our experience in the cargo bay to show her what the hell we're actually dealing with. She hates you, dude. Okay. I know she hates me, but and, I'm going to show her, like, and, this is uh, horrible crap happening. Seven, what, are you, what are you doing in the meantime? Uh, I, I want to see if any of the cameras in... If there's, there's nothing... I assume there's cameras in this room as well, the med bay. Yep. Okay, have any of them been moving? I'm going to walk around and see if any of them follow me. So I got to assume, I assume perception spot check. Yep. Okay, so am I doing like a mechanical check on playing with her computer uh, or you'd anything? Using, you'd be doing computer use. Okay, so you'd I got a nine and where's my computer use? Uh, or is that just a jack of all trades? Flat intelligence. Okay. Uh, that, that, so I got a plus one then. And so jack of all trades. Use any skill. Okay. So I got a ten. So, um, Savrik, you don't notice any of the cameras moving to track you or follow you. Uh, some of them okay. do move, but uh, you decide to sit and watch one of the ones that are moving. And unless the person on the other end is focusing on that particular camera and being very, very sneaky, it seems to be moving to a timed pattern. Um, yep. uh, um, Jake Long sits down at the computer. The, the woman kind of curls up underneath the desk um, uh, <laughs> to try and sort of keep herself out of his way. Um, and he tries to interact with the camera system. You manage to pull up the, the basic camera system. In fact, the camera system was mostly pulled up anyway. Um, obviously, she's been... Mm -hmm. interfacing with the camera system herself um, but you can't um, achieve playback with any of it, it seems to be live play at the moment okay um, however, you can have a look around the a look around the bay, base if you wish okay, um, using perfect. live play on the camera system because you do have access to the camera system you can have a look in um, different sections you can have a look in um, different parts if you wish so we've got that airlock section just next to us Let's take a look in there. Okay. <clears throat> so, up in the airlock section up there, just make sure I get the right image. Uh, nope, not that one. Uh, I want... Is it this one? My labeling system was not perfect. Uh. <laughs> um... So, basically, up in there, you have um, a, a set of... Um, storage lockers um, of a variety of sorts. Most of them um, seem to be the sort of storage locker that you'd associate with uh, long-term storage of supplies. Okay, um, so it's not like a kennel and... for those dogs and stuff she was talking about, eh? Nope. Okay. Uh, as you flick through the cameras, you do find the kennel. The kennel is to the south, which is uh, this section down along here. Okay. Um, and in it, there are each each one contains probably about four or five animals, apart from um, the one turned horizontally, which contains about four hundred mice. Mm. Um, <laughs> Shit! All okay. the mice. Um, just four hundred mice. Okay. <laughs> just 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 four hundred mice. Um, you can right. also have a look into the uh, main hydroponics bay because there's a nice camera pointing into mm. the main main hydroponics bay. Um, so as you're flicking through the cameras, you come across uh, this. Mm -hmm. So so we have our hydroponics bay sitting in, in massive great ranks of, of um, hydroponics. Um, you also find uh, a camera that points at this, though you don't really know what that is. Mm, okay, so some kind of lab with the observation thing at the end. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. and the yeah, armory. This camera. Okay, you found the armor. Are there dudes in the armory or no? <clears throat> as far as you can see, no. Okay. But the camera, uh, the cameras you have don't capture much of the floor space, so there may be. Mm. Um, Are the cameras numbered? As in, like, does it ex does it have a posi general position of the? Mm -hmm. Oh shit. Buggy bay. 
that so she talked about have earlier. A bay yeah. containing two buggies. Yeah. One of which is far more advanced than the other one. Yeah. Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> So, so you have uh, a selection of cameras. Uh, they are uh, labeled, um, but they are labeled with uh, an alphanumeric code. Okay. okay. So she says as as the tell, just... armory is across from the control center, right? Yep. So this would be armor, or one of these would be armory, one of these would be control center? Uh, you'd have to go and start exploring if you want to find out. Well, like, right, this I'm is the right. hydroponics, this is the... So, like, these two rooms are... Yes, we don't know which one's which, but those two rooms are what they are, right? Unless there's another map. Unless there's another map, okay. So, yeah, we got no idea where these cameras are. Okay. Uh, can I tie the camera feed into our door control mechanism and suit displays? No, your radio doesn't have the bandwidth. Uh... Yeah, I'm a I'm gonna roll to hide just so I can. I'm just gonna slowly go exploring. Okay. okay. So um, you've you've come over to the door into the hydroponics. You've 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 hidden yourself. Uh, roll a listen for me. Really I... good listen. So. You hear, um, I'm wondering if this is going to come through on the microphone, uh, you hear... They're just like a knocking against something. Okay. Yep. Uh, you hear that just, just, just ticking through. It's, it's, it's somewhere in the hydroponics bay, but, you know, big leafy Echoing. green room, lots of stuff. Yeah. Echo. Okay. An idiot ran right. ahead. Uh, I'm going to have one last little <laughs> conversation with this chick here. Okay, so you know what's happening really... here. Are you coming with us, or are you staying here? Uh, she's going to stay here. She's been perfectly happy in this room for quite some time. Uh, so... While you are here, um, mm -hmm. while you are sort of hanging out over there, she does pop out of the office, and she does go and collect like a, a half dozen med kits and, and go straight back into the office again. Okay, so while she's collected that, just before I'm leaving out, it's like, do you need anything else? I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to lock you in here. Um, she, she says to you that um, she, she, I, I need food, but the, the nearest food is, is the, the contaminated hydroponics and the, re the rest of the food is, is the other side of the base. Well, if we okay. find something, have the opportunity, I'll bring you something back. And head off, I'm going to come over here, send an issue lock command to that door, and... Take okay. a look through these uh, airlocks, see if there's anything I can spot in there. Is it a pass-through window, or am I just seeing a general airlock decompression area? Uh, it You do have windows in this uh, airlock door, but mm -hmm. it's a double airlock door. Yeah. So because it's a double airlock door, you're basically looking at a window through a window. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you, can see a, you can see a very, very small slice of corridor. Hmm. So yeah, not much. I'm gonna head into the air, or I'm gonna ask Sam and Darren if they'll come with, and then head into the airlock. I'm gonna come around this way and go through this side so we can cover more ground quicker. Because I heard the bang sound coming from here, so I don't want to deal with that. Okay. Currently. Uh, why is everybody so in? Moving. Everybody's just running in. Okay, these guys are idiots. Sorry. Sorry, I'm I, I'm having trouble moving things. Definitely, uh, I'm moving things on mass. Yeah, because okay. now that I'm to the out. inside yeah. door, I want to mm -hmm. set the vibro sensor against the door and see if we can scan the area. Okay, so you set the vibro sensor down, and you're getting back. Um... Oh, you're just gonna tell us no rule well, check on that. Well, you've got to interpret the results. Okay, you've got to interpret the results. Uh, that's a decent roll for interpreting the results. Um, I was going to give you generics and then ask you to roll to interpret them, but uh, okay. we shall just go straight with what you've got. Um, you get back some general vibrations um, of the station operating. Mm -hmm. uh, you're also picking up a, um, again, rhythmic pulsing vibration or rhythmic thumping vibration um, that's coming from the right, uh, which is over towards hydroponics. Um, and you're still picking up that intermittent sort of hypersonic um, pulse sound 
uh, pulse of sound that was picked up last time. Um, <laughs> as far as you can tell, as far as you can tell, you're not picking up any other vibrations. Mr. Saravok, is there anything you can use to jam one of those doors open? Um, no. Not, you have your crowbar, though. You do have your crowbar. Yeah. But I'm, I'm still hiding, correct? As far as I know. Yep, you can still be hidden there. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna slowly sneak out through here and take a quick peek around both corners and see if I see anything. Okay. Roll a percentile. Wise. All right. Roll a D10 that? and a percentile dice. Where is my? <laughs> I had a plan, but he's gonna so go do his thing since he doesn't trust me anymore. This one and this yeah. one together. Yeah, there you go. Oh shit! All right. Twenty-two. Well, that's not great. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, can um, everyone please roll a reflex save? He just had to go barreling into the rooms, didn't you? I got a sixteen with a <laughs> reflex this of is five. Great. This is great because all the guys who are in this airlock here. Who had a really, really easy time of saving managed to roll really fucking high, and he did not. <laughs> so <laughs> he rolled a three. <laughs> so um, shit. Uh, Sa Saverick walks into the room, and the air smells a little bit off, having just come through an airlock. The smell, the smell in the air is a little bit um, kind of a cross between being acidy and putridy. And, um, yeah, his radio uh, gives off a spark. And the entire corridor is filled with flame. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. You did not manage to dive back into the airlock, so you are going to take a grand six burning damage on a D6. Damn. Okay. The, the airlock he's backwards. through, is that fully open? Uh, that was open when, when he did it. Um, okay. So he's been thrown backwards by the flames. Has the flame protruded into and start a lit the hydroponics? It has not lit the hydroponics. All of them are nice, fresh, green, leafy things. They do not light right. easily, and it was a flash fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dick. What? I was hoping to burn out that room where the sound was coming from. But then that point, would cover actually. a whole room full of smoke. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so no. now that you're done being a jackass. Um, <laughs> okay, so those doors are open. I'm gonna go. Gr uh, what would the durability of the med kits be? Um, the med kit case is, yeah. is, an, is a, a thin alu steel case. You've got a hardness of about six or seven and, and okay. only about ten hit points. I, I, if I put. Three of them abreast, trying just to keep a gap and a door open. Would they keep the door open? Yeah, you'd be able, you'd be able to jam the door. Okay, so I'm gonna take six of those things, walk over here, and place them in between the doors. Okay, so you've come round the yeah. side and you, you've you've jammed the doors open. Okay. Okay. Uh, and now I let everybody else in on my plan. It's like we picked up something on the vibro sensor here. Another rhythmic thing. That was the same thing that I found in the other room on the first corpse we had to deal with. Yeah, and I heard uh, the I, whole Yeah, I, I want to depressurize this area. So if we all get back in the med bay, we can try to lock up these doors mm -hmm. and then start a depressurization cycle in the room that we just had a fire, or at least attempt to. Are you all good with that? Come on, let's go. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. So okay. this door here, this door here will be locked up so that it's just basically the hydroponics and the other area, and I'm trying to decompress. Actually, let's decompress the animals as well. Screw them. I open up that door. <laughs> wow. You're just like, you're just like fucking, oh, you intimidate yeah. the scared person. No, I didn't intimidate <laughs> the scared person. 
I put my hand on her arm and then stole her badge. Dozens of animals and you pressurize dozens of dogs and like hundreds of mice and just like kill them off without even going and looking at them. It's like, dude, this is like dick move 101. I'm sorry, I've been dealing with zombies. I wanted to get the hell out of here. Now it's just like, yeah, everything, screw it. I I'm done with this whole situation. I've got to dismember corpses. Hyper cautious person is the person who hasn't taken any damage yet. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. The hyper caution person is safe. <laughs> All right, well, while I'm in here and he's doing that, I'm going to heal my dumb ass up on a med bay. So you're going to apply some burn gel. Um, roll, roll a treat injury for me. All right, where's my. The hell do I put it? There it is. My god. Okay, so you managed to heal yourself 1d4. Four! Yay, Yay. four. Um, so Samuel hasn't been able to activate a decompression cycle. You can roll a computer use check, Blaster Toad, to see if you can... Um, so that's just going to be cycle. a plus one to whatever I roll. D20 it. plus one. Yeah. 17! Nice, oh, I got an 18. Yes. Um... You manage to run a decompression cycle on <coughs> these three rooms, thanks to prep propping open the doors. Um, so you manage to run a decompression cycle here, and you decompress that part of the station. And I'll um, leave it for about 20 minutes. It takes minutes a while. After it's yep, decompressed. it takes a while to decompress. And, and then you leave it for 20 minutes, and then what are you going to do? Ah, uh, repressurize so that we can now go take a look through. Okay, so you turn off the decompression, and you open the door into hydroponics. And there we go. Okay, and I want to take a look through these crates now. Uh, one second. Um, okay. <laughs> you've uh, you've uh, finished the decompression, and you open the door. Uh, can you each roll a reflex save for me? Damn it, Jaden. Uh, so 11 oh, holy shit, plus reflex of 5, so if it 16. Where is my details? Decompression I got rules. a son of a bitch. And he got a 4. <laughs> plus 4, four so plus I got 8. 8. Okay, so... Um... <laughs> Jaden, I hate you. See, I never so, said I went back in there. He just opened the door like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, but despite the fact of wherever yeah. you are standing, uh, pick where you were standing when he opened the door. I um, was here. You were here. Yeah. So, um, uh, Blaster Toad um, or Jake Long manages to grab hold of the door frame, um, as does Darren, but uh, both Samuel and Savrick are uh, whipped towards the door as the um, <laughs> decompressed room sucks in air. <laughs> oh, this is great. Thankfully, thankfully, the door is large enough and neither of them come into much compression or much impact as they go through the door. Um, it takes probably about four minutes for the whistling to stop and the atmospheric level has dropped. So, you so like we're at like a point three? Uh, no, it was point 0.8 um, with this compression here, bearing in mind that it sucked it from the rest of the mm -hmm. station where the vents are connected. Um, you've dropped down to about 0.7 atmospheric pressure, okay. so you've lost a point of atmospheric pressure doing that. Um, but it's still breathable. Which yeah. means that it, 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 it's breathable, but it, it's not comfortable. to become noticeably uncomfortable yeah. um, as you try and breathe. Um, if the door had been any smaller, then they would have banged against the sides of the doors and taken damage. So if they would have been down at this door... <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, if they'd been down at that door, they would have winged off the edge of the doors and taken damage. But uh, okay. thankfully, you did a double door. So now um, that that's so... all done, you're <laughs> yep. not going to depressurize shit anymore, are you? <laughs> you know more of that. Like, I will, I will... <laughs> no, no, that is not happening again, or they will be hell to pay, you dumbass. How about you give me that, your ro no, my rope no, back and um, that, see way, how that ends up? I hope... I hope that was in character, because that is a beautiful thing for Zavrik to say right oh, now. Oh, that like, is... You yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, None you of stupid this. douchebag. Why? <laughs> you had no idea what was going to happen. You just have... Uh, I, I told you the whole plan. 
Like, I told you guys this is what was going to happen. Yeah, but we have no idea if it would repressurize. That's the thing. It was brought up earlier, and you paid no heed to it. Because you're so caught up in your idea, which ends up being shit. You chode. <laughs> well, I will, we'll, we'll see if it's shit when we come across a zombie that can no longer attack us. So, yeah, deal with it. <laughs> I'm going to go look at dead uh, puppies you, now. You see what happens when you depressurize. <laughs> So what, you're going to go jerk uh, off too? Jeez. So We've we, seen we, what we happens have... when you depressurize it, but not if it's repressurized. Does it come back to being, you know, mobile? We don't Shut know. up! <laughs> it's dealt with. So, Jake, Jake Long's gone off to the, the animal bay and finds loads and loads of suffocated animals. Mm -hmm. um, which is which is just charming. Just, just, just lovely. Just a lovely mental image. <laughs> Of, of all these fucking animals that suffocated to death. Lovely. I'm going to wander through the hydroponics here and hopefully... I'm going slow. I'm, I'm going to roll a hide, actually. Yeah, I have to. Because dick tits. Alright. Okay. 16. Works. So yeah, I'm going to... I'm gonna go looking for the source of that previous thumping. Okay. I want to do a spot so, as I go through here as well. So I got a 15 plus what's my spot? One. So 16 as I'm coming through here. Just seeing okay, if there's so any information. Yeah. Uh, you find um, some little documents detailing, like you know, lab animal names and. And details of experiments, and and uh, you find a little uh, golden retriever called uh, Fluffy, who you know has a collar and everything. Um, it's 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 all very heartrendingly horrible that you've. Why would they these name them? Death. Why would they name them? That's horrible. <laughs> Why would you depressurize? Like animal subject two three four. Like they're be. they're testing on these things. I was not expecting that. Why not depressurize a smaller room first and test what the reaction is before you go and absolutely? <laughs> because I've got no idea what's happening <laughs> and freaking space zombies. Okay, this is but how I would do this. Saverick comes around. Saverick finds the source right. of the banging noise. Um. And uh, it, it, it's human-ish, okay. Maybe. Um, it it looks mostly human, um, but it it's it's got bulging and, and growths. Um, it, it looks quite mutated. Um, All right. Does it have hands? That's my first question. Yes, it does. I'm gonna roll to sever them before it can move. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. Okay. You, you can't depressurize stuff because that's you horrible, can, but I'm just going to cut this thing's hands off. Oh, okay. Because this thing's stationary. Essentially, you can do basically the equivalent of taking 10. Like, if, if something's just lying there, not uh, moving, you okay, can just yeah, things I to will, pieces. I um, will take its hands off just because last time something we thought was dead, you know, broke hey people. <laughs> so okay. I'd rather be safer than sorry. So, so, so you set about systematically butchering this thing, whatever it is. Um, yeah. I walk around the corner to see this guy cutting off a thing's hands and like, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, what, what I did was horrible. And just keep on walking. <laughs> <laughs> I love what you did has consequences. Like a... This has no consequences. See, the thing I love about this is in a genuine situation where you were trapped somewhere with zombies, you would be having these sorts of arguments with each other. Like, you just did something horrible, but I'm going to do something else that's equally horrible, but I'm not going to acknowledge that what I'm doing is horrible because I have to do this. <laughs> this, this is like a legitimate, proper way of doing this. It's, it's great. It's, it's less horrible, and we already know the consequences of not disabling something we previously Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Something I came mean... up on the freaking screen. Scanner. So as we were having this argument, I'm back over here. Something came up on the scanner, and we know what the consequences of that last time was. So what the hell do you want to do? 
Last time something came out on the scanner, they weren't moving. We had the element of they had the element of surprise, but now that we know that these things work that way, so a preventative airlocking measure of striking first, you ass hat. Without knowing the consequences, I walk this way. What it will I walk this way. You open up the airlock. <laughs> You're, <walking laughs> You're still on radio. Like you dick this. <laughs> all right. Uh, what's okay. the response from our two other player characters as um, they're hearing all this on the open channel? <laughs> Who are they uh, agreeing but, with? Basically, both of them are currently having a bit of an argument over um, whether or not they should just like leave you two to it. Um, <laughs> That Darren kind of wants to go and hang out with the woman in the med bay. He's like, shit, she's survived here longer than we have. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm just going to go and hide with her. Um, and, and, and Samuel is kind of ridiculing him over the fact that he just wants to get his leg over because they've been in space with just men for the last six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good on you, Sam. Just give that guy a hard time after we like psychologically scarred him. I still love the thing that it, he has a visible facial tick after I made him throw somebody out the airlock. That's great. Yep, he has a visible facial tick <laughs> that primarily acts up when he's nearby you. Oh. <laughs> I love how I'm the one who chopped dead people into pieces and all that before I did this, and he's the one giving people mental damage. Yep. And scarring them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is turning out how I expected. <laughs> well, it's definitely not what I expected. I was thinking, like, virus yeah. and, you know, like, virus the movie, those magnetic yeah. waves that have been going through space that we travel on have, like, caused machines to go haywire and make crazy psycho cyborgs on spaceships, and we come across one to salvage it. That's what I was expecting. Now we're like all okay. Not. Science facility on a moon with gaping giant dying planet right beside it. Yeah. Oh yes, um, do you leave one of your porcelain dolls, you sick psycho, near the decapitated and no. handless corpse you just defiled? Doesn't work that way. Okay, I'm gonna take a look through these no, windows and see the what I see. Okay, so through those windows is a door across the corridor and a, a standard sort of transport corridor. If you squeeze your face up against the window and look to the left, there are some uh, open windows across the side of the corridor looking out on a pair of uh, moonrake buggies. Oh, this is the buggy bay, okay. Yep. So if that's the buggy bay, then that means we have to drive somewhere for controls, because I haven't seen any other staircases or stuff leading off here. No. Unless well, these hallways um, continue. Again, again, it, it's one of these things with the difficulty of the map maker. Basically, you have a hallway that goes to the right here, and this hallway down at the end. Oh, this go continues off to the right as well. This continues. Yeah, okay. So this continues off that way. Yep. Okay. I okay. So these were just enjoy. general containers that we didn't bother checking out. Hmm. Uh, they were because sent to containers that contained uh, f um, some sort of medical supplies, hydroponic supplies, lots of chemicals, plant seeds, um, something usable, some um, some basic tools for hydroponics and basic tools for repair, um, some bits and pieces. Okay. Okay. I'm. I I, I suggest we head down this hallway. I wanna. We know what's in here. We nothing usable currently. Hmm. Uh, Sam's our computer guy, right? Samuel. Sam is indeed the computer guy. Okay, so while we're here, I'd like to strike up a sm small conversation with Sam over the radio. It's like, hey, hey Sam, we got some buggies over here. Uh, from what you've seen so far, if we jam open the airlock, will they maintain a safety latch there? Or can they still take off? Like, can we lock these things up somehow? Um, the the buggies are um, basically sitting in a, a container bay. Um, they're not technically attached to anything. Oh, so probably have to either to get Sorry, the way I was seeing that map point. is I thought they were, like, airlocked to the rear, and then they, like, drove off, and no, that was okay. an open area. Oh, okay. No, that, 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 that's an open area. You'd have to go out of the airlock, and the, the vehicles are parked right up against the airlock, but you'd have to still... Okay, find. so it wasn't like our ship, which was mated to an airlock there. 
They're just inside no. a room. Okay. 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 Never mind then. All right. Um, are there windows through here? Windows through this little doorway. Yes, there oh, there's a we no longer need our there. truck. All right. I'm gonna make a. Uh, I'm gonna go for a spot check. See what I can see through there. Okay, um, through that uh, little window, you can see there's a couple of cutoffs to the right, a couple of cutoffs to the left, some more windows going out into the um, kind of buggy bay on the left-hand side, and directly ahead, you can see a nice little sign on the wall that reads, uh, Computer Core, No Unauthorized Personnel. Okay, that's good. To, that's, that's important. Okay, so is that a room that that's sitting in, or how do we... Because uh, I just see it, like, on top that, of a block. <clears throat> basically, that is the computer core. There are places for you to move in and through it. Um, ventilation ducts, uh, um, engineering sort of walkways and things. But it's not so much a room as it is a solid block of um, electronics, uh, cross-wiring, processing circuits, okay. uh, backup batteries, backup power supplies, etc. Okay. Sam, I think um, we found the computer. I, Can you give me a hand over here and head off over I'm, to deal with stuff? I'm going to come. I want to see, look through this window here. See what this you room is. You found the armory. Fantastic. Sweet. Alrighty. Is the door locked? Yes. Actually, I want to I peek. Thought so. <laughs> uh, is it a conventional lock or is it a. It's wired like, into the station security system. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Okay, so I am rolling a, a, do, 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 a craft electronic to see if I can gain access to the computer. I guess, is that the best way to Who do it, or should I do a computer card. access on there? Uh, you can roll a craft electronic to try and basically uh, mess with the circuit boards. Okay. Um, Please don't. No, no, no. So I've got a, a nine. I'm trying to tie it into our existing communications link for the doors so that we can have further access. So with the grand skill of nine, you manage to, uh, well, essentially scratch up some circuit boards. Um, <laughs> and, and you've done something. Something's probably working differently. You don't know what you've done. Um, you were messing with circuit boards. Um, the circuit boards probably do something. <clears throat> awesome. So I could, like, press my new interface button I created and say, hey, look, now all the airlocks are open. We're screwed. Or it could be like, yeah. oh, look, now there's disco music. Yay, disco music. Yeah, that's what I'm oh, thinking. If I, could, if I could play music right now, it would be brilliant just for you to just press press your radio button and just for the whole station just to be lit up with disco music. <laughs> How creepy would it be to be well, chased through a space station? By like, silent corpses. Oh, that has to be my next Unreal project. I like that idea. <laughs> that like that, that, idea. that is so scary. That is so scary. All right. I'm, I'm going to check to see if what he did worked. I'm going to try and open this door. Did it work? Uh, no. Okay. I holster my cutter okay. and come over to open the door. Okay, so you are going to cut open the door with your cutter. Mm -hmm. Do I have to roll for that, or it's because so, it's a freaking cutter on metal, uh, it cuts? It's a cutter on metal, but you're going to have to expend four charges to uh, cut your way through the door. One, two, three, four. Okay. So, um, Blastato comes over with, with a massive great magnetic coil cutter and starts ripping chunks out of the door. Um, Beauty. Bet you're happy to have me around now. <laughs> Well, we're well, not coming up with ideas to kill us all, yes. <laughs> it's the killing us all I'm not a fan of. <laughs> Uh-oh. There's tokens in here. Maybe those are all the guns we can find. I say, but there's no token blacks in there. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's racist, um, it's terrible. To. It's racist but and terrible, it's... but for that reason, token black. But it's, <laughs> but it was. it's, a, it's a token yes. black token. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> 50 foot, always finding a way to offend. Oh. 
It's brilliant. <laughs> Offensive for the hell of it. <laughs> yeah. I have no excuse, so, just yes. You have cut open the door to the armory, and you gain access to the armory. Um, the armory room uh, looks pretty much like this, looked mm-hmm. uh, looked at from the um, left-hand side. So you have the open desk, mm-hmm. you've got a couple of desks, you've got a couple of wall units, and a couple of storage units at the back. Um, All right. So you have, have this set of um, things to see. Okay, uh, I'm going to run a... Okay, so I'm here at the opening that I've cut through. So hopefully blocking mm-hmm. that so that nobody else can run through. I want to run a spot to find out where I can see explosives in there. I got... Oh, fuck. <laughs> Armory pretty! Big guns! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to do that now and hopefully roll something better than Down Syndrome. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> but, but, but... But he I matches my Down Syndrome of two. and Bonus of nine to it. <laughs> right, so you managed to spot that there are assault rifles, a couple of single-shot rifles, some pistols. Uh, there's even a couple of magnetic coil rippers in the corner. Um, oh, yeah. Some drill rigs, some basic tools. There's a couple of... Um, body armor sets to go over the top of spacesuits and spacesuits. There's some bits and pieces like scattered around the room. No direct uh, mention of explosives. Uh, can, I, can I tell if there's any shotguns available or space type shotguns? Not that you can see. Although probably no. because okay, Chick no, mentioned our contingencies plan with shotguns. Yeah. Unless she's just talking at her ass. That's what I was hoping for. Alright. So, we're, we're gonna go, like, stereotypical zombie movie now. You with your space shotgun, me with my space chainsaw. Because, <laughs> like, much. I've got the coil ripper. That's I mean, pretty much what it is. As long as there's metal, I'm it ripping it through off, it. As long as it takes off limbs, that's all that matters. Oh. Okay. Alright, So, um, what would you like to do? I'd like to roll... Hey, um, Darren, any chance you could check this place out for us? <laughs> I like to as I take a step backwards. <laughs> oh, the poor psychologically damaged guy with the facial tic <laughs> is going to be the first person to go in. <laughs> <laughs> you are the worst person. Well, I just figure I couldn't see Dick in there. So, like, apparently I'm not able to see too well with weapons and that. I don't know my stuff. So I'm like, yo, Darren, dude, with some sort of more experience than I do. Will you help me out with this? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So, da- Darren walks in. Uh, one second. Um, I am about to sneeze. I hope... Hang on a second. And I'm back. <clears throat> oh. Can I be heard? Yep. Good. I think 50 um, took off so for a quick Darren... sec, though. That's okay. Um, so Darren walks in, and uh, he's looking around, and um... All right. <clears throat> hey, fifty. So Darren walks in, and he's looking around, and um, there are now, uh, as far as you lot can see, uh, four zombies, or four of these corpses, because they start standing up around the room. Okay. What would I have to do to do a precise shot on a certain body part? Uh, basically, you do the same thing as roll to attack, but their defense is slightly increased because you're aiming for a smaller area. Okay. So it's a little bit harder to hit. So All I will right, stand um... just at the door and draw my the regular gun. Hold out pistol. Okay. And attempt to fire at the knee of the one directly forward. Seven. And you miss. Uh, yeah. Can you all roll initiative for me? If I Eight. Can find my dice down there. And... Uh, what, plus two, I think, is mine? Oh, so. 
Son of a bitch. <laughs> Two. What's your initiative modifier, though? That's what I'm looking at. Where is it here? Top of the sheet. Um, just underneath hit points. Mm. Oh, there, there you go. Plus two. Yep, I'm blind. It's just like, it's the same as like, because 50 foot ant has less experience. It's the same sheet as layout, basically, as the last sheet. Yeah. Um, yeah, just I'm just... In one thing wrong. No, I, I feel this one's <clears throat> actually a lot easier to look at than the last one. Because yeah, you don't have elements encroaching on each other. <laughs> it's essentially exactly the same as, you know, I recommended a text sheet mm -hmm. um, originally, like a TXT yeah. sheet, because um, we could transfer it onto the cards. It's basically a TXT sheet in Word with a little mm -hmm. bit of... Um, a little nicer editing, yeah. editing, formatting. Yeah, Yeah, it just took me a minute to... I'm not paying attention, that's all, I'm just slow. <laughs> okay, so I need to roll so many dice, I'm actually going to roll them physically because I have a stack of dice next to me. Oh, holy shit. Uh, I got 17, 18, 20, and 11. Oh, god damn it. And a 2 and a 2. Okay. Are those our guys' initiatives? The 2 and the 2? Those are the zombies. Oh, those are zombies. Good. Because if that was Darren and Sam, I'm like, you useless twats. So, Darren and Sam. Oh, okay. So, um, got a, a Darren's getting a 19, and Sam's getting a 10. Okay, not too horrible. Okay, so um, Darren draws his holdout pistol and shoots at the nearest zombie. And misses ter terrifically with a grand total of, um, like, four plus his attack modifier, which is no chance of hitting. So, um, okay. now, now here comes the fun bit. Um, so, after Darren... With his uh, 19 comes one, two, three zombies, which get to act. Oh, lovely. Um, so the three zombies do charging attacks, which would be uh, this zombie, this zombie, and this zombie. And all three of them hit Darren. Alrighty. So... Um... Darren's going to take um, 6d8. <laughs> I take it he's gone. Darren takes 38 damage. Darren's I take it dead. he explodes. He's, yeah. Da da Darren is now pieces. officially dead. Yeah. yeah I'm going to pull you back through the door Actually, and close it I'm... as fast as possible. What do you mean close it? It's been cut open. Oh, that's right. Okay, <laughs> so I'm running yeah, this way. And while I'm running over the radio, I'm like, yeah. uh, let's decompress it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm just hoping the zombies follow us. <laughs> okay. So I, I love now that the, the standard default process you have is run the fuck away, leave other people to die, and just, just, just decompress everything. He was already dead. He was already dead. He's gone. He was. Darren's yeah. dead. He was dead. Okay. So you all run through the door, and um, Samuel is going to try decompression. Oh, we can just decompress that area? Samuel to decompress. Okay, that's cool that we can just decompress that area. I thought we had to, like, run back to and lure them into the other thing. Okay, so I am going to attempt a decompression. Six. So I got seven. As well. right. So you have I just failed to decompress the area using... Yep, you can try if you want. Uh, oh, now you, you, now so you decide to decompress with us. Okay. 11 plus, uh, let's have a look, uh, 2, 13, yep. nope, it's a DC 15 so far, so, so far none of you have successfully used the computer system to decompress that. Okay, where are the zombies at? <laughs> uh, that, that all took probably, probably about uh, a round's worth of things, so all the zombies have moved forward in, in that round, <laughs> they now get to move forward this round, um, which is these three and this one, and then the other ones get to move after you guys. 
I am rolling to yeah, decompress again. Like... Unfortunately, that classifies as a recheck, um, and you can't do rechecks. What? Like even though it's just a new round. Changed. Yep. Nothing I can't take it. Compute systems exactly the same. So, so you, you're you're basically just kind of like smashing your fingers on the keys now. Uh, you can try other things though. Bear in mind you do have an airlock to your, um, or just behind you on the other map, mm -hmm. you have an airlock. Yeah. Um, so you could basically activate your spacesuits and do a manual decompression. You could literally physically decompress the area with mm -hmm. your spacesuits active. I I vote that's probably the best thing in this current situation with how many there are. And or actually no. No, let's um lure them back into the hydroponics room and then because it's so big, pull them around and once they're in here, run through this way, run back here and lock off all those rooms there we go, that's so right. they're stuck in here so my thought is here. let's get them here so if we can stand at this door yep okay because they're coming down here okay so we're running i take it we're running otherwise like you may be sauntering leisurely behind me but i'm freaking running um Mm. I, I dive into the airlock, and my quickly explained plan to you all is, okay, you guys aren't going to like this. We've got a door in front of us. We've got a door behind us. We have to open the door behind us to get rid of these things, but either we lock ourselves out with the buggy, or we all hold on to whatever the hell we can find, and when they're right in front of us, we open the door and let them get spaced. And then we can continue in here. I like being inside places, okay? Let's stay inside places. Okay. So, so, um, Savrik, what, what's, what's your take on, on this plan of spacing zombies? While we stand inside a small decompressing airlock. It's too close. If one of us isn't able to grab on, they'll just get pulled out and possibly wrecked. I'd rather not deal with that issue when you can just as easily lure them up through here, this little doorway, run, the, run this way, lock this, lock this, and just leave them to wander around here because all these other doors are locked. They can't go anywhere from in here. And that way we can deal with them later. We can just depressurize this again if we if want if we want to or we can keep luring them in here until we have a mass little group in here that all right i still got remote door way. access that's just panicking exactly. the hell out okay so while we've had this conversation exactly. how quick did how far did the zombies get or is this still all in one turn um well th this 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 lasted about sort of like um, this conversation lasted about 24 seconds in real life, um, or would have would have lasted about 24 seconds if you'd been rushing, sort of talking to each other quickly. The zombies are like, like about like here now, because they're not particularly fast. Okay, you've got like a, a group of zombies at the corner. So we're all beelining it for the hydroponics then, eh? Uh, since we're running here, is there a whatever that attack of opportunity or something crap? Because we get so close. There is indeed. Yay! I knew a thing! Crap, that was a bad plan. Each one of you is going to receive one attack of opportunity as you run it, past the cluster. It, unless Sam decided to stay there and be like, no, screw you guys, I see what's happening. Okay. Or did uh, he join us? He's actually failed this time. Well, okay. By the way, on the first round with Darren, none of the zombies scored below an 18. Mm -hmm. uh, on this round, none of them have scored above an 11. So... They're not okay. actually going to be able to hit you as you run past, okay. which is, which is ben beneficial. Fantastic. Um, so okay, now we've so got zombies that's... sort of creeping after you. Okay. Let's run so I'm heading this side. way because we I'm only have to hit this other door. The Benny Hill music. Benny Hill music. Essentially. Which one's that? Um, Can you sing it for us, Droid? Is... Um, I probably shouldn't. I would probably uh, destroy your earbuds 
but the the <laughs> Benny the Benny Hill theme is um, the police the classic British comedy police officer chasing someone. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So as we're moving this way, zombies come behind us. I take a second to fumble oh. at my remote thing to lock this door. Oh, it's not. And the kennel doors. And I forgot about that door. Front is the auto lock. Oh, the it's I, I I jury rigged remote access. Okay, it's not yeah, just like so, lock all the freaking you know I, doors. No, but you know what I mean. Just oh, Sam access. ramming into that room. No, oh, yeah, Sam's pegging it. Crap. Sam's fucking off. Uh, hopefully, I'm Sam uses the thing that he has to lock himself in there because I locked all the other doors except for the one we just went through, which I'm now locking, and the one to the med bay. And uh, there's some nice banging on the uh, the door behind you. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, it's like there's no screaming, there's no yelling, there's just thunk, 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 thunk. Okay. Okay, I radio to Sam uh, to see what he's doing. This. We want to depressurize Sam's locking this now, everything or... he comes across. Okay, like, he's locking. Sam's dis that Sam's Sam's kind of fallen in with Darren's previous idea of locking himself in the med bay with the medical woman. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and, and just saying fuck it. <laughs> Crap. Okay. okay. Um, I would we actually be able to depressurize this room again or no? Because like the other time I depressurized from a room that was meant to have airlocks. So it makes sense it has a system for depressurizing. True. Would this yeah, other one, true. or would it just slowly go stagnant? Well, you've still technically got this this room here, uh, as far as I'm aware. You never actually took the medical boxes out of this airlock. Um, oh, right. This room is still technically jammed open. Sure, let's depressurize yeah. the area again. Screw them. I don't want those things banging okay. anymore. Okay, so it takes a little while for you to get the computer system up and running and to get the vents working again, but you depressurize the room again, and, and the banging continues for the, the, the typical minute. Um, by the way, uh, if you tried to go with the other plan, uh, which I was kind of, in a way, slightly begging you would go with, which was sealing your, or going in the airlock and depressurizing, uh, the airlocks don't work when there's zero pressure and the airlock has air in it, so you wouldn't have been able to explosively decompress it. Even if I blocked it um, with... Um... The boxes again because i'm still carrying two medical boxes and that's what i did last time to but block those other doors it, it would have uh, in that case like the atmosphere on both sides was the same mm -hmm. uh, in this case the atmosphere on either side would have been different it would have let you oh. open one door but wouldn't have let you open the other one so um, then i would have had to try to pry even, bar it and we probably would have gotten eaten in there and even if you had managed to open it these things remember from the airlock experiment you ran before these things can run for almost a minute and a half without oxygen Oh, so we still want to have, like, what, would three rounds to deal with them? Uh, ten, technically. What? Oh. Yeah, aren't Six you guys around. me? <laughs> you, you would have been dogpiled in the, the airlock. It would have been hilarious. And the end of the campaign. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's perfectly possible to end the campaign there. So oh. after about a minute, the, the banging sound dies off. Um, so, so you've got a choice, like you can reopen these doors and repressurize these rooms again, or not. Nope, leave it. <laughs> uh, Sam, are you coming with? Over the radio. Uh, Sam's going to, uh, see on the, um, computer system on the, uh, cameras if he can find another way around. There is another way around, but, um, he's concerned that there might be other things lurking there. Okay, so right now he's hunkered yeah, down sure. in the place. Okay. Med I've been yep. continuing on my way to the armor. Yeah, I guess we're continuing. Zoop. All right, now we've. Oh, did we lure all the zombies, or only like the four that we saw? Uh, you lured all six zombies. There was plenty of enough noise and attention to to sort of bring them. Okay. Bring bring yeah. them out. Okay. So, I'm gonna. Move into the back now that I can search the whole area and what do my elf eyes see? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so <laughs> what do my elf eyes see? Okay, 
So you're not as versed in weapons as some of the dead members of your crew. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know enough Very about nice. weapons to recognize at least the general types. Uh, most of the weapons here are ballistic form. Uh, you have two ballistic rifles um, that use a heavy shell. They're, they're long-range rifles, which is a bit odd for a base on a, on a moon. Uh, slightly odd to be having long-range rifles when you'd expect most of the combat, if there was going to be any combat, to be close range. Uh, there's a couple of assault rifles, uh, standard issue um, short-range orbital defense rifles. Um, you've got some Toric 9mm pistols, um, you've got four combat shotguns um, with uh, cylindrical, chain, uh, cylindrical uh, magazines. Um, you've got a couple of uh, basic digger rigs, which are pneumatic, um, kind of like shoulder rig exoskeletons for rapid digging and um, excavating uh, in a controlled manner. Uh, you've got a couple of magnetic coil rippers, some crowbars, some grappling hooks, uh, a couple of welding rigs. Uh, you've got what a few body the... armors. Okay, yep. what is the weight of the shotgun and the... One second, I'll be right back. Okay, well, while we're waiting for him, you say there's two magnetic coil guns in there? Yep, there's two uh, magnetic right, um, So, Jaden, I assume you'll just have this in hand. I gotta talk to Mum for a second. I'll be right back. Okay. Okie dokes. Yeah. Uh, the magnetic coil rippers each have a uh, fully charged coil magazine in them. Yeah. Uh, 20 shots piece. And on the shelf next to them is another six coil charge magazines. How much um, weight is like a to... thing? Two pound a piece. Two pounds? Okay, I'm taking Two all of them. <laughs> so there's 16 pounds I'm adding to my inventory. So... so that plus the um, medical kits. Which are 12 pounds to... each, yeah. Yeah, you're up to 36, 40, 52, 56. And I'll just call it ripper battery again. Yep, that's fine. With full um, 20 yeah. shot rounds, okay. And then uh, I want one of those rigger digger suits. You want a di you want a, a um, pneumatic um, drill skeleton as well. Oh hell yes! I want pneumatic robo suit. I want the new pneum okay, pneumatic so robo pneumatic, suit. The pneumatic drill skeleton. Um, the pneumatic drill skeleton consists of a uh, backpack with harnesses that go around the chest mm -hmm. and the upper shoulders. Yeah. Um, it contains two pneumatic um, actuator sets going down your arms and ends in a pair of um, adjustable um, tool connectors at the end, where you're, uh, which come out over the end of your arms. Uh, you can have uh, pneumatic drills, you can have um, scoops, uh, you can have um, uh, basic cutting tools attached to them. They're basically um, engineer's rigs for heavy duty engineering. So what I'm assuming that is, is, and I will do a image in Discord as well for this, so that you can see what I'm looking at, and I will open one here so that the recording can see what I'm looking at. So that's what I'm assuming this digger rig is. It's something like that, but with, uh, with um, the same sort of rigs on the legs, on the arms, and then an attachable tool bit on the arm? Um, yep. Um, actually, I have a, a pretty decent um, image uh, for you to have a look at. Okay, is that um, going to be over in the Discord for me? That will go over in the Discord. Perfect. Um, I can put it on the big screen in the thing as well, if you'd like. I'll just bring the uh, window that opens from Discord over on top as well. So that way we don't have to mess with the map as much. So a slightly more technically advanced version of this. Oh, so it's got like got the... an extra arm on it. It's not like the tool rig is right on your own arm. It's got a um, second set of arms for you. Arms, you essentially kind of like use those extra set of arms to loop your arms into to move them about. Okay. If you let go of one of them, it will stay where it is. But you, you use okay. your own arms to manipulate where they are. That is and awesome. It allows you to... 
carry heavy duty tools and, and use heavy duty tools. And the um, cutting okay. tool you're talking about, is it a mechanical cutting tool or is it just like a big freaking blade or what is it? It's a mechanical circular cutting tool. Does that take up both arms what or just one? Really doesn't use? Uh, that would take up um, one arm. I grab a digging rig and two circular cutting tool attachments. Okie dokie. So, uh, does that add to my weight or does that allow me to carry more? It adds to your weight because it's got no exoskeleton on the lower half. So oh, okay. So it's, it. okay. it's 25 pounds uh, plus four pounds for the cutting rigs. So you're adding another 29 I'll take pounds. A, I'll take a shotgun and a bunch of ammo. Okay. So five pounds for the shotgun and another two pounds for um, an extra 40 shells. Okay, so thing. what was the total weight of the digging rig with two saw tools? Uh, 29 pounds. 29. Sorry, just making notes on one of the note cards here for myself. So that brings... That's fine. So, okay. Hmm. Oh, and I want to replace my bent crowbar. Okay, that that's fine. You can just replace your bent crowbar with one of the pry bars that's available. Mm -hmm. Without any issue. So I'm now in a slower weight class, aren't I? Yes, you are now moving slightly slower. You lose 10 foot per round for uh, for bearing so much weight. Mm -hmm. Alright, have I found any grenades or anything back here now that we've got the full vision? Any sort of explosives? Unfortunately, not that you can find. You can't find any explosives. However, what you do notice is that there are several um, sort of chunks of shelf missing, like several empty sections of shelf. Okay. So somebody's already come and raided this place. Someone's certainly mm -hmm. come and taken some things. Okay. All right. Okay, right, so, so this we've, guy is yeah, not so there. The armory, what we what we needed. I'm wondering, do we stop the campaign now so we can go eat and then continue this back up another time? Yeah, we can pause the campaign here. Okay, like. perfect. Yeah, that worked. Uh, could you save the uh, table? Uh, save it as a game. Yeah. Uh, so save game, and it will just reload with everything, where it is, and all the cards written up and things. Oh, perfect. Okay, so sci-fi D20 campaign. And I spelled campaign wrong, but whatever. And there we go. Okay, it has been saved. Alrighty, fantastic. When do we want to do this next? Sunday again, uh, or I can do um, Sunday or Saturday. I can do days during the week as well, but um, I know other people are very busy yeah. during the week. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay. Uh, how easy would it be for someone else to drop in with us at this point in time? Like, do, would we just find uh, somebody easy. in a corridor? Uh, pretty easy because I've actually got a group of survivors rigged up for you to meet. So okay. You could be joined by one of the survivors. Who's a little bit more okay, proactive cool. than the okay. other ones. So yeah, just in case Mike isn't puking his guts out or Sean decides to join us. Yep, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you have awesome. a wrap-up or summary for us, or do we just call this it and end the video? Well, I'll just do a little bit wrap a little bit of a wrap-up summary. So Thank first you. off, thanks guys for playing. Um, this has been a, a kind of a, a horror look at the D20. Um, campaign style D20 rule set uh, in a sci-fi world. Um, we've been playing a, a rule set called D20 Modern, which is a slightly older rule set. Um, you are trapped on a space station several hundred light years for, or from on a moon base several hundred light years from the nearest help. You have no access to the radio system. You have no ship. You have encountered living corpses that are capable of doing a lot of damage very very rapidly and you have lost three members of your crew since you since you and, arrived and then two yeah. buggered off on us and two left with the ship and two ran away 
So thank you guys for playing, and I will kill you <laughs> next time. <laughs> that, that's a great thing to end on. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> we're, we're all going to die. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I like it. Uh,